it's okay for the VPUB to get serious from time to time, to critique things and to talk about things in such a way. But I think we always need to remember that whiskey is all about being fun. And I would like to think that the majority of the VPUB content is fun. But tonight I wanted to do something that has have been far too long in getting around to doing. I'll talk about that before we kick off tonight. But eventually I have to honour my nominations for the five whiskey challenge tonight. But obviously it's the VPUB and we've put a wee bit of a VPUB spin on it. We've got some people in involved. We've tried to gamify it a little bit, tried to make it competitive. But more than anything, as we make it fun, also make it of value to you guys as you watch it. Let's see if we can manage. I'm looking forward to it as always, and I'll see you in a second. Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the VPUB. Welcome to another Thursday night. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Yes, we're going to gamify things tonight. The VPUB will be a gamification session, an experiment of sorts. But I'm going to do the very best I can to not only interact with you and keep you guys connected and participating in things in the lounge, the people that are participating live, but for the people who participate live tonight, the people that turn up to join us live, you will be able to directly control and affect the gamification that works and plays out throughout tonight. <laughs> Let's hope we can pull this off. It should be fairly simple. It's not very complex. It should play out in anything that you that you that you don't understand or you're not sure how it's going to work or whatever. Just watch along, and by the time we've done the done it once, you'll know exactly what you're doing from there on in. Everything works in my head. <laughs> I can see it working, whether I can actually affect things in such a way to match the vision in my head. We'll just have to wait and see. Fortunately, I've got great, great guests to come on and support and have a bit of fun with us. Brave guests, honestly, because we're asking them to not only come on and put forward their recommendations for your judgment, but we're asking them to compete with each other tonight as well and to compete with me. So. I'm always humbled when I put these suggestions out to people and they just say, aye, okay, because hopefully they realise that it's whiskey and it's intended to be fun. So that's the plan. That's the scope and the shape of the VPUB for tonight. I hope you're all up for it. I hope you're sitting comfortably and I hope that it's something that you can enjoy and look forward to. Remember, it's only the people that are joining live that's going to be able to affect the result and the gamification, of course. But if you are watching this in the replay, there is a game that you can play. You can watch as it plays out and try and guess what the winners are going to be. Pick your own winner. And if you get the winner, there's four possibles, right? So there's four nominations for each category. So give yourself four points if you get it right. Three points for second, two for third, and a single point for fourth place. That way you're always going to score something and just see how you score. And if you've played along on the replay, if you've, if you've joined on catch up and you're playing the game, leave your score in the comments below and I'll come in and congratulate you there. I hope you have fun with it. I really do. hope we all have fun with it tonight. I'm looking forward to it. A couple of... Um, oh, just bring that window back up, Roy. Don't throw that away. Yes, a couple of folk celebrating uh, in the chat tonight. Savar, uh, I think he's... My our Icelandic barfly, Sevar Björgvinsson. Uh, Sevar, good to have you in. He's just joined the Aquavite Barflies. It's wonderful to have you supporting, buddy. Uh, your Uncle Vanya is in, and she's celebrating being a member for 14 months. She's saying, evening, beautiful barfly souls. Podcast style for a bit until yet another flight, but sticking around as I've got VPUB FOMO. Thought travel and equaled happiness till I joined this community. Have an amazing night. Travel does equal happiness. And remember, you've always got the ability to pick it up on the replay. Thank you for supporting me as a barfly for the last 14 months, as well as Pedro supporting me for the last 11 months and saying good evening, barflies, and good evening, Aquavite. 
they've joined the Barfly membership and what it does is it gives them access to icons and emoji and things to colour up their chat and the comments even after the effect. You don't need to be live to do that. You can leave the emoji in the chat underneath. But the biggest thing that it does is it means that I never put ads around a VPUB, not in the middle, not at the end, and certainly not before we kick off at the beginning. And I think that uh, we all benefit from that. And that's with great... Uh, gratitude, sorry, with thanks to all of the Barflies and members that have stepped up to support. Thank you all. Welcome, everyone. Cheers. All right, as you're all settling, let's do what we always do and uh, jump in to the lounge tonight and welcome some of you beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated Barflies. Looking forward to it tonight. Remember, if you're trying to get my attention, just type Aquavite. I'll read the orange and I'll be able to welcome you in. I scroll back and see Conrad, Black Fantasy and Aguavite. If five whiskies really is all, all you need, then I've got some explaining to do to my wife. <laughs> That's right. Not only is it difficult to condense it down to five whiskies, but let's be honest with ourselves. Whatever five you actually pick, if you stand back and look at it and say, if that's the only five whiskies I've got for the rest of my life, I'll survive. And it's kind of good to do these exercises now and again. And remember that while we have fun with this hobby and it's fantastic, Overaccumulation is often very much a part of it. Sometimes we need these kind of contrast exercises in order to keep things in perspective, right? Papa Q is saying good luck tonight, Roy. Thank you very much, Papa Q. Um, as you are voting on the whiskies tonight, there's going to be a mix of you knowing and then you, sorry, not knowing whose whiskies are what and then discovering which whiskies are what. So as Papa Q is giving me specifically luck tonight, I think my luck, Papa Q, will only depend on the integrity, the quality, the discernment of the selection that I put forward to you tonight. That is what's going to decide my fate. Rick Johnston saying cheers from San Francisco, Roy, and fellow barflies. Oh, I think this should be fun. Thanks, Roy. Rick, glad you're here and glad you're looking forward to it. Whiskey Weekend Dram Harrow is saying hi, Aquavite and Barflies. And Martin Logan is saying hello, Aquavite. And even Barflies, my pick is Glen Cadam 10 as a daily supper. Deanston, 18 to impress my guests. Buffalo Trace is the mixer. Carnmore Williamson, 2013. A Lafroy as his Friday night sipper. And Caddenhead's Capardonic as his special uh, occasion sipper. Excellent choice, Martin. Maybe in the future, you know, maybe in the future. I'll explain this before we kick it off. There's an opportunity, if this is terrifically successful and everyone enjoys it, that we could do it with a little bit more of a V-pub theme to it and continue the format going forward. Gerben Blocker is here, saying nice to play along. Fantastic, Gerben. I'm looking forward to your participation. And Arnie Tiger is here too, saying it's always fun in the V-pub. Thank you, Arnie. It's always fun to have you here, buddy. Thank you very much. Gina Kimo from Canada saying good evening, Roy. And Hells Wid is here. Of course she is. Evening, Roy. Aquaviti. Gino, it's been wonderful to hang out with you a couple of times this week. And Helen, you're always here. It's wonderful. Every time I see your rename, it feels like a hug. Fantastic to have you. Uh, Luna Aaron, oops, just jumps. Obviously, maybe a super chat has come in. I don't want to miss Luna's chat, just as I mentioned her name. So much chat coming in. Trying my best to keep up. Oh, Luna, where are you? Luna Aaron is saying hello, wonderful barflies and the wonderful host Roy. Good, good to see you, Luna. I'm glad I caught that. And Jimmy Leg is saying, how are you feeling this evening? I'm feeling fine, Jimmy. I'm feeling. A remarkably fine, really good. Gene Kelly is saying good evening, Philip. But it's easy to feel good when you've got pals hanging out with you as well. Everyone that's joining me as guests tonight, they're not just kind of random guests that have plucked tonight. I've gone out to pals that I trust and have a lot of fun with uh, inside and outside of the VPUB. So it's easy to feel good, Jimmy. And I'm glad you're here too. Gene Kelly saying good evening, Barflies and Roy, celebrating the first day of spring and looking forward to tonight's event. Yeah, and remember that. And it's too late now, uh, but we're not at daylight savings yet. So we've got another uh, few days to go before the end of the month. We switch over. So everything's out of kilter a wee bit. We're a clo an hour closer to the guys in North America. Uh, good to have you, Jean. Excess to Scotch is saying good evening, Roy. Uh, the Vin Pub was also great this week. That's right. Uh, on Tuesday night, we did a YouTube roundtable session with Scotch photographer Ben. Uh, with Dan from Summerton Whiskey Club, with Jeff Whiskey, with Finn from No Nonsense Whiskey. I feel like I'm missing somebody. I probably am, but we had a fantastic session uh, 
doing a wee blind challenge. And then after the blind challenge is all said and done, we just hang around and chat for a wee bit. So that's over on No Nonsense Whiskey's channel, eh, the most recent stream that went out for a wee bit of fun if you want, if you've got some time over the weekend for a bit more live stream catchy up. Eh? Eh, Sandro Fatsolari saying, what a splendid idea. I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. Ciao to everyone. Cheers with a Glen Scotia 15 tasty. Fantastic, Sandro. Great to welcome you and Mark Winter the same evening drinking Holyrood's Embra this evening. I saw that. 43% and the price point was a bit puzzling to me. Be keen to try it, but it's definitely, because of the presentation, try before you buy. Whereas if it was presented similarly to the arrival, it would be an instant buy, just out of pure curiosity because how much I enjoyed the arrival. Gian, good to see Gianni saying good evening, everyone and Roy. It looks like it's going to be a great VPUB. The Sleepy Drammers will try to stay up a bit. <laughs> Sleepy Drammers being Jan and his partner, Teresa. Good to have you. And Danny Keenan is here too saying popping in to say hello and we'll catch on the replay. Listen, there's lots and lots and lots of comments and I'm missing a lot of them. Uh, I'll try and do my very, very best tonight. Daniel Williams is in and bought me a dram to say what to make Roy happy as Larry like and subscribe <laughs> hey, thank you Daniel thank you for your kind words and thank you for your your super chat as well cheers buddy and my pal Tim don't pass whiskey from the states is saying here for a live two weeks in a row but glad the 18 poured oh you've gone right to the last category tonight haven't you he's saying I got five of the signature hundred imperial bottles including Ben Nevis awesome value fantastic Tim you're sipping well, aren't you? Uh, obviously, you're in a state in the US that get that can get delivery of the good stuff. Listen, I hope that all of those whiskies are going to go down well, Tim. Wonderful to have you in, and thank you very much for your dram. Cheers to you all. And my pal Chris, Everwind is in, celebrating being a member of the Barfly, Barflies for five months. Okay, let me tell you how it's gonna it's gonna work tonight and how I kind of foresee this thing. I've been nominated to do this five whiskey challenge once, twice, potentially maybe more. And I apologize to anybody that's nominated me that I just never ever did anything with it. And I always wondered how I would kind of uh, dedicate an entire VPUB to something that was pretty well covered in the short form content out there on YouTube. I didn't want to shirk the concept or the idea or the nomination but it was just kind of pushed, pushed, pushed. And then I had this idea that, well, it doesn't need to be just about me and my five. I could maybe reach out to some other people and kind of gamify it a bit. And I just left it there. Anyway, this week we had a different VPUB lined up altogether. And I reached out to somebody to collaborate with them in order to cover that VPUB. And as we started to kind of bounce it backwards and forwards, we just, in a very, very small amount of words, we killed the topic dead and said no it's not the right time and there was a few reasons for that and when I get that guest on because he's joining me here tonight he's still part of the proceedings tonight we can talk about why that was done so I looked into the notebook this topic still there right at the top everything's been scored off <laughs> I've covered everything and this thing is still sitting there. I said right just tackle it just do it let's see what we can do so I sat down and I thought about how we could make it work for everybody participating live and uh, we're going to give it our best shot tonight. Let's see how we go on. How it's going to work. I'm going to have four guests, including me tonight, actually. So three guests include, and, and then also me. Uh, four of us on screen at, any, screen at any one time. So I'm participating tonight. Cons consider this a bit of a pilot, a bit of an experiment. We all have a nomination. We've all put forward a bottle for each of the five categories that's been used for most of the five whiskey challenge. There has been some kind of modification and change as it's moved out of Reddit and into the YouTube space and the bourbon space and Scotch whiskey space and things like that. It has changed a wee bit. But generally speaking, and I would love to know who the original creator of this was in order to give them a bit of credit, but I'm not sure where it actually originated from. But it's done its rounds. It's at least a couple of years old now. It's been a long time for me getting around to it. What we're going to do is we're going to put forward our each individual offerings for five categories of daily sipper, impress your guests, best mixer, Friday night sipper, and special occasion pour. As we put those forward, I'm going to put in the chat a live poll of what the whiskies are for each of the categories. At that stage, you're not going to know whose whiskey is which. So you can look at the whiskies and and choose. This is this would be my recommendation that you choose purely on your gut feel 
of the whiskey and you vote for the whiskey that you want to succeed and go forward. The winner gets four points, the runner up gets three, two, one, down to last place position. Everybody's getting points, okay? What I would say though, as everyone's invited forward to take turns at putting forward their case for each of the bottles that they've nominated, the reason why, why they love the whiskey, why they think it's a valid nomination for that category, the poll will still be live. So almost like a, a political debate or something, you have the ability then to maybe hold and wait and change your mind before you commit to that vote. So really, it's, it'll stay open right up until the end, until the four whiskies have been presented. Then we'll kill the vote at the end before we move on to the next category. The winner will get four. As I say, it's three, two, one. That's how we're going to play it. Then throughout tonight, over the five categories, we're going to get to the end. And at that point, I'm going to ask you all a question which could change the dynamic of the game a little bit. Finally, hopefully all my guests will be able to stay for a quite interesting quiz at the end tonight. Not because it's attached to the theme tonight, but I've added another layer of gamification to the quiz at the end tonight, just for tonight. Any patrons that are joining me tonight will know exactly what I've done because when it was Sunday, Sunday night Patreon session, the lock-in I had with them, I did something different to the quiz at the end and I've done the same for the public quiz tonight. It won't be every week I do this because it takes a long time to do it, but it should add a wee bit of fun. And that's the theme throughout the course of tonight is fun. So let's raise a wee glass to fun, to whiskey, and to getting our lovely Thursday nights to hang out together. Fantastic to have you all in. Welcome everyone. Let's move. Jimmy Legg is saying, don't try to tell me what's interesting. Well, I hope what does end up being interesting, Jimmy, is that, what's going on with this mouse? is that um, while we're playing a game and having a wee bit of gamification going on tonight, we're going to be putting forward 20 whiskies, four participants in five categories, 20 whiskies and not a duplicate amongst them that's useful for everybody to watch along, especially when they can watch along and see how the community is reacting to those whiskies live in real time. I hope that's interesting. In my wee simple head, it's interesting. I will try in my hardest not to tell you what's interesting, but I will ask you your opinion afterwards, all right? Whiskey with Molly Bennett saying, okay, that made no sense at all to me, crack on. <laughs> Hopefully it'll make sense as it plays out. That's what I'm super nervous about, Ben. It's good to have you in, buddy. I'm nervous that I uh, end up, you know, the things that work in my head don't necessarily work live. Let's give it a go. Daniel Williams is celebrating being a member of the Barflies for 38 months. Welcome to the first edition of the Whiskey Games. <laughs> That's right. We will treat it as a wee bit of a pilot. If it crashes and burns, we never speak of it again. If it does really well, we can talk. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to my pal uh, over Northern Ireland. I'm going to bring in uh, the man, the gentleman, the legend that is Jim Whiskey Novice, and we can talk about why our original idea never went ahead. Hello, my friend. Welcome behind the bar once more. Oh, that's a handsome glass. That's a Drew from Arizona glass filled that with right. black. What, what do we have, Guinness? Uh, no, actually, we are on Brewdog. Um, oh, the black heart. Yeah. Yeah. Is it good? Uh, it, it is good. It's nice and chocolatey. It's, oh, uh, it's I'm very impressed. I'll have to give it a wee try. But they're, they're doing it in wee cans, though, aren't they? Or the tall cans, uh, or feel feel of advertising there, but oh it's, no no, they are they're yeah. doing it in bigger cans. Okay, uh, the brew dogs that I'm normally familiar with tend to be the wee three thirty mm -hmm. bottle cans, so that's good to see. Good. I don't care what you're drinking, fella. It's just nice to have you here. <laughs> would it Pleasure be wrong? Be would it be wrong to? This is going to be a fun, positive V pub tonight, right? <laughs> would it be wrong to have a bitching session about why we ditched our topic? No, no, feel free. <laughs> okay, I'm, I, I will pass you it off start. to Jim because, and, and I feel bad. We were going to have an Irish whiskey, dedicated V-pub to Irish whiskey. I've had two, three, four Irish whiskey dedicated V-pubs in the past, but I've always kind of apologised that they tend to come around St. Pat's Day because I think that I should try to talk about all of these whiskeys all the year round and not just because it's the 17th of March. 
Um, however, I do use the 17th of March St. Patrick's to prompt me that I've maybe not covered it for a while, and that's why I've done it in the past. This year, I've decided that I'm just going to ditch it and talk about relevant Irish whiskies as and when they come along, like I would talk about English whiskies or Scotch whiskies or any other whiskey, and treat it all the same way. But that's not the only reason. Why... Why was it difficult for you and I to get the juices flowing for Irish whiskey this year? Why yeah, was that, Jim? As I said to you, Roy, I was planning on actually doing a live stream based around it as well. And there's nothing, nothing, in my opinion, exciting happening in Irish whiskey at the minute. As a matter of fact, it's almost going in the opposite direction. Now, don't get me wrong, there's... I actually had a gentleman through the door today. I will not name names. He, he He's a distiller. He, he represents a distillery in the north of Ireland who have just released two whiskies that I actually, I've tried one of them and I'm so glad that they've released it as a bottle. I will be picking one up. I'm not, I'm not going to name any names, but it is an interesting whiskey. It is an exciting whiskey. There's just not enough of them at the moment. There's, there's. It'll be short cross then. Just, just it give us a wee exactly the same as David. I was speaking to David this morning. <laughs> and, well, uh, we, we need more of that then. What, so that, yeah. that's the type of thing that we're after. But they, they hadn't walked through your... There wasn't anything exciting there, and maybe that's not released yet. I looked through the bottles that I had on the shelf, Jim, and there's a lot of bottles there that I dearly love, Irish whiskies. You and I are big fans of Powers John's Lane, um, the certain releases from the Spot series, so single pot style Irish specifically, but I've got other things down there like Teeling Malts and their Black Pits peated release, and I've got Waterford down there, and I've got the Selkie and the Dark Selkie, and lots of really nice Irish whiskies, but they've been covered on previous V-pubs. They've been given their airtime. So when you and I are trying to inject some energy into what we can talk about, I don't know which of us decided. I think you might have suggested... I don't. I don't. One of us decided that this is just this is not going to be easy to. I prepare. definitely, I definitely got the feel that it just wasn't going to happen, and it was one of the as in it wasn't going to work, and I, yeah. I wasn't adding any egg to that pudding then because it was one of those things that I got the feeling that it was almost a sort of if you excuse the the terminology a half-assed thing anyway because mine certainly was as I say I was intending to do a, a live stream up you know, the state of Irish whiskey at the minute. Yep. And and it's not in a good state, in my opinion. So it's, now's not the time to talk about Irish whiskey. Maybe We want to talk year. about, we want to be positive about things exactly. when there's things to be positive about. And when it's far too much overpriced sourced whiskey, it's confusing the landscape for everyone, brand over producer, when, it, when the prices are just, it's uncomfortable. It, I'm looking online at these bottles that I don't recognise. Maybe ask you for a recommendation. You can guide me in things, but I look at it and it's just too expensive for me to even take a risk or a punt on. Um, there's one or two that I've purchased over the last year or two that have been been okay, uh, but they're not great whiskies when you factor in price and value. Um, and that's kind of made me a little bit shy about exploring the the. And it's really interesting because I know how passionate you are about the category. You love it. And you want it to endure, you want it to thrive and flourish. But you're it's difficult when we're asked to pay too much for too little. And we're seeing similar dynamics in certain areas of Scotch too. Mm -hmm. No, we're, I keep saying it, we're, we're at least 10 years shy of, of where Irish whiskey will be. And, uh, and it'll sort itself out. But just at the moment, it's it's not. And, and, and the prices have started, I mean, we're, we're in a bit of a lull. I would suggest that Irish whiskey, I mean, and I'm not talking about sales in general, but I look at the auctions and what's selling in the auctions and there are huge steps in, in what, so nobody's going to the auction, nobody's taking their prized bottles to auction at the moment because they can see that lull, they can see that dip. And that's not, I actually did hear words today where the dip's only just started. We've only just reached the start of that and it's going to dip further. Well, it'll sort itself out. We'll not, we'll not necessarily discuss that here, but uh, just Irish whiskey in general at the moment, not the subject uh, worth wasting a fee pubble and put it like that. Well, let's you and I make a wee commitment that as soon as the Irish whiskies start to get reasonable, exciting, um, 
do the things that we've seen from uh, recently from the signatory vintages of this world that bringing out really kind of good value products, really uh, interesting uh, prospects. Glasgow Distillery have just appeared over the horizon like like a like a stampede of fantastic looking <laughs> cast strength animals. Right, there's lots of it happening out there. And what we'll do is we will not treat it as an Irish whiskey. We'll just treat it as a good whiskey. And it fits in with the rest of the images, everything else. Cheers, Jim. Thanks for, your, thanks for your shoulder to cry on this week. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Right, let's get the rest of the team in. Let's get in my uh, good pal. Uh, everybody knows who this is. Uh, 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 Glasgow Whiskey Festival director, uh, general whiskey uh, ambassador extraordinaire, uh, currently working for Dec Decadent Drinks and uh, just brilliant person to hang around about whiskey, uh, Julie. Fantastic to have you in, Julie. And we've also got, uh, for about the third time this week, I've been able to hang out with my pal from down south, from the West Country, uh, one of my favourite channels to watch as well, if I'm honest. Uh, uh, my, uh, just make sure that, that he's got multiple names, but tonight he is Jeff from Jeff Whiskey. Good to have you all in. I'll put you in your wee slots where I need you to be tonight. Sort you around into the right order. And just that, oh, where have you all gone? <laughs> I'm using a magic mouse. And you know the finger gestures on the magic mouse? <laughs> Whatever I just tapped, three finger gesture or something like that, it just disappeared and there was a wee window on the Mac saying no windows to, to <laughs> display. Anyway, you're back. Fantastic to have you all in. Hey, Julie, you well? I am, thank you. Yes, I am. Very well. You're not nervous about tonight at all, are you? No, I'm 100% confident in my choices. Good. Definitely. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. I think you should be a wee bit nervous. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, I'm trying to stir up the competitive side of things. <laughs> but of course... The, the, the idea is, is that, and I've promised you this from the beginning, that it is intended to just be good fun. So we will score it and things like that. But of course, what we hope the takeaway is, is that even the ones that people put forward and it maybe only scores one, it still puts it in front of somebody as a as it something for them to note, especially when we've got a chance to put our case forward for it, right? Uh, Sugar Kitty sharing uh, the Jeff Whiskey and the No Nonsense Whiskey links in the chat as well. Thank you very much, uh, Sugar Kitty, for your support. So, I we've caught you in a quieter time of the year, Julie, haven't we? Th the Glasgow Whiskey Festival's not kicked off fully yet. Um, you're doing your, your daily grind. Do you ever get fed up working in whiskey? Oh, never get fed up working in it. No, never. Never. That's good to Sometimes hear. Sometimes it's more challenging than others, but no, I never get fed up with it. It's uh, It was definitely a, a, a good decision to move full time into whiskey. So well, I'm, I'm really glad five to hear years that. now. So yeah, right. and I'm sure no every day is a bed of roses, right? But I'm sure oh, there no. are challenging days. But it's good. Yeah. It's really good to hear. Yeah. Can yeah. I ask you an honest question? And I'm uh -huh. springing this on you, and I'll share my answer too. But. What percentage of your pals in life are whiskey pals versus legacy pals who are not into whiskey? Um, probably, probably 50-50 now. I think you're doing better than me. Yeah. I think you're, I've, I've kind of been really bad and just kind of, I, all my life seems to be taken up with the whiskey and, and therefore the whiskey pals. And a, a lot of my pals, have the, the, there's a huge overlap because the, those pals, I have evangelized or they say bullied them into liking whiskey. So they've become whiskey pals. But I think yeah. that's that's the way for it to work because the ones that are only into whiskey have become a whiskey bore, right? And anyway, I don't yeah. get invited to things anymore. So <laughs> that's the way of it. So 50-50, you're keeping balance as well. I reckon so. I reckon Smashing. So. Jeff. How are you doing? Yeah, I can't complain. I can't. I may be a bit more nervous than Julie because I only made it back with seconds to go after a tactical toilet trip. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's there's no issues there. Nothing that we need to be worried no. about. No, <laughs> all gravy, clear sailing, ready for tonight. Just the nerves. Okay, Jeff, good. Yeah, aye, a wee bit, a wee bit of nerves. Aye, a wee bit. Don't be nervous tonight, Jeff. Don't be nervous. You made us nervous though, and I need to call you out on this. The, a few months ago, a couple of months ago, there was this big kind of fashion that was happening on YouTube and all these big hitter subscriber, but huge channels announcements about I'm quitting, I'm quitting, I'm stepping back, I'm stepping back. And some of the whiskey channels stepped back or changed. The whiskey tribe changed direction, right, between the vault and the tribe. 
Um, we've seen Ben, uh, Whiskey Diary Ben, Scotch photographer, saying, I, I can't do this like this anymore. I need to change it. I'm stepping back. And you did a similar video. And I think that's, is that still the last video you've done? Uh, no, one came out today. So I'm really sticking oh. to the stepping back. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's encouraging that one has come out today. I didn't spot it in the setup for tonight. I've not spotted it yet. Usually when a Jeff video drops, I take time out and I go away and watch it. And I'm very, very glad that the video announcement that you put out was exactly that. You are not stepping back. But I think what it did is it made everybody realize that there's a lot of work and effort into this. And the folk coming into YouTube discover it very, very quickly. And yeah, keeping life balance and stuff like that is important. You're not leaving us yeah. by the area. No, it's it's. I took away maybe four months, and in that time, I had this video put together where I'm going to say I'm going to step back, and I didn't have like the plums to click upload, and then that only got uploaded maybe a month back. No, yeah. maybe two months. I don't know now. Yeah. Um. And since then, I've just been absolutely gagging to get behind the camera. And I think it's because I've not been talking to anyone in who, why Julie's got 50 50. I may be 1% of my friends will put up with me for talking whiskey for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So I needed, I needed my, my real yeah, friends, well, my whiskey friends. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. It's not just for me, but for everybody that enjoys the Jeff whiskey humor and the laid back eh, take on everything. I'm excited about that, and it gives me something to watch after the stream tonight, buddy. Good news. All right, let's get started then. I'm going to ask you, well, I don't need, just for, for the sake of posterity and for the everyone that's joining live, you've put together one pick for each of five categories that's daily sipper, impress your guests, best mixer, Friday night sipper, and special occasion pour. Yes? You've got your yes. bottles on hand. The caveat that I asked of you is that it should potentially be a bottle that's on hand. I don't think there's much in it for you to say, oh, yeah, I'd put this one forward when it's something that you don't even have on the shelf. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't see how you could nominate something that you're really precious about, but not so precious that you don't even have it, right? So that was the only caveat, I think, that I've added in when I sent it across to you. Everyone's picks came in, bizarrely, Thankfully, there are no duplicates. I put myself at a slight disadvantage because I'm at an advantage. I see your picks first. I can see what your picks are. So, so there is an advantage there you could consider. So if you had picked something that I wanted, I removed it from my list and I had to find something else. So you guys, based on time of submission, you guys got a priority. Okay. So that means that I have also got a pick for each of the five categories too. And we're all going to spend tonight going toe to toe. And how we're going to do this, and this is where it's going to get clunky because I can only do one poll at a time. So I'm going to go into the lounge and I'm going to put in here, um, what is it, what are we calling it? We're calling it Daily Sipper. Can, can Jim, why is it bad that this category is called Daily Sipper? Because it's, you cannot uh, emphasize on somebody to be drinking whiskey every day just as a just because we told you to do so. That's the way I would look at it. <laughs> it's, right. it's not. I mean, it's, it's some of these whiskeys I would imagine are a good breakfast whiskey, even. But at the same time, you don't. Yeah, you don't that. want you don't want to yeah. encourage people to be drinking whiskey for breakfast. No. Yeah. So, is there a better name for it? Yes. What's the name? All right, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as I say, well, I don't know. My wife suggested um, your optic bottle, but that's just. Uh, but I'm sure there are. That, that genuinely is. Um, but the optic bottle is something that's super convenient and super easy to drink too, right? Something that's sitting there on the on the thing and. Yeah, I, I, another another good way to to talk about something that's available all the time, daily access. I think I've got some ideas how I would do this and how I would vpubify this, but we, we just want a caveat that tonight we are in no way talk, encouraging anyone <laughs> to be drinking whiskey every day. So daily sipper, this is what it's been called. This is what it's been known. 
up until now. Anyway, while I was chatting to you there, Jim, I've put together the first poll and that drops into the chat now. So everyone's playing along. You guys don't get to see this. You won't see the votes coming in. You will be just sitting there talking about whatever bottle you've put forward, right? And then at the end, I am going to go in and pull, kill that the poll and allocate the points at the point I kill the poll. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So they're voting away. People are voting right now. I can see the votes coming in. But they don't know whose bottle is who. This is a good thing. Give them time to vote based on the whiskey, not based on the person who's nominating it. However, they can change their mind based on the case that we put forward. Do you want me to put the case forward first for my bottle or would you, one of you prefer to put your hand up to kick things off? Well, you know what does them that all. mean, Jim? So you, yeah. so go you, ahead. <laughs> you know them all, so you go first. Okay. I'm going to start and I encourage you to do the same by saying I interpret Daily Sipper as and I interpret a Daily Sipper as something that it's probably inexpensive. There's no anxiety about replacing a bottle. You don't mind if you rinse it, if you go through it. It's something that's easy, always attainable, always accessible, always on the shelf. And something that is not super precious. But it still has to be good. That's how I'm interpreting this idea of a daily sipper. And the VPUB lexicon, it would be something along the lines of when I do what the industry drinks or something. We call it a permashelf bottle. That makes sense, right? I am putting forward for my nomination tonight. And we did suggest maybe putting a rule in that we could only proffer one Campbelltown whiskey for each each of our uh, five categories. Um, but we didn't need to do that in the end. We've all managed to, to keep it. For those that put forward a Campbelltown offering, we managed to keep it to one each. So that rule didn't have to be put in, but it might be something we have to consider for the future. Regardless, I am putting forward a Campbelltown whiskey as a daily sipper. This is a Jane A. Mitchell's Campbellton Loch, 46%. Fully natural whiskey. If you want to see just how natural this, and actually if you want to see how much of a daily sipper it is, not only do I have one of the early... <coughs> that Nothing. bottle did not smash. It did not smash. <laughs> I'm so relieved, and I bet you it's probably one of the most expensive ones. It might be one I don't pour tonight. <laughs> Every night I set this wee table up on the side, especially when there's sometimes 24 bottles sitting there. I think tonight's going to be the night that I clip one and knock it onto the floor. Straight on a wooden floor, but it's safe. I can't even show you that it's safe because it'll give away a secret from Sorry. later. Anyway, where was I? This is a daily sipper to me because I have not just one of the early pale ones. But I've got three different shades of this whiskey. The two darker ones, you might be only able to see that they're different shades with a bit of white paper behind it, I think. So the one on this side is slightly on, on this side is slightly darker. Anyway, the reason I love that is that it's this embracing the fact that it's a batch made product. It's okay for the batches to be different colour. It's okay for it to change. It's okay for them to take that concept of a blended malt and remind everybody that it's a single malt and it's made by batch. And if it's going to be natural colour, they're going to chase flavour first and the colour becomes incidental. That's how I interpret it. This came out at £34 originally. Most retailers are up closer to £40. Some some places have got it at 42 It's just the way that it's been in the last couple of years, but it's still probably the only thing from this company, Julie, that we can easily go in and buy, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I happen to know that most of the recent releases are mostly from one very, very specific distillery that's normally much harder to get a hold of. We know this by just sipping it and tasting it. It's always excellent whiskey. It's what I've been sipping along with you guys tonight. I'm going to pour a wee bit more into the glass and I'm mixing batches here. I'm putting one of the early lighter ones in to a darker one. Does it matter? No. <laughs> it's still a blended malt. I think it's fantastic value, especially the fact that we've got Campbelltown malt that we can get a hold of. I rest my case. 
Julie, do you want to take it away? What are you putting forward? Daily mm. Sipper. My Daily Sipper that I'm putting forward is Indri. So Indri was a whiskey that you introduced me to, Roy, when I was doing a blind tasting for you on, uh, on here. Yeah. And I would have laid a lot of money down on a bet that I knew that this was Irish whiskey. And when we got the categories, I still said it was Irish whiskey. And even when it was revealed, I couldn't believe that it wasn't. It's so fruity and bright. Um, this is my second or third bottle. It's very new. I'm thinking about being my third one. Um, I think it's a fantastic drama. I've been sharing it with everybody because it's just so nice. And um, yeah, it's definitely, it won me over. So yeah, Andrew Trini. That's that's where I've gone with my daily supper. I've not Can got I, much yeah. to say. <laughs> what I've noticed about it is that I wonder if their strategy there, Julie, was because it was 40 quid everywhere. Yeah. And then it was 42, 43, which is fine. I mean, there's a lot of kind of price increases of that order. Yeah. Uh, recently, a lot of places are sold out of it now. And the ones that have it in stock are closer to 60 quid for it now. Ah, really? Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame. It is a shame. Mm -hmm. I don't know the discussion about whether it's worth the 60 quid now. Uh, we could probably spend a few minutes on it, but I think that it definitely changes the language that you use around. Mm. Uh, value's important. I think value's part of it. Um, and that's in no way in me in trying to kind of sway anybody there. I'm just talking about any whiskies that we put forward tonight, we need to contextualize it and say that Julie and I were raving about this. We loved it. And how, how many bottles of that have you bought? I think that might be my third. Aye. I think maybe my so third. And I don't, I, I genuinely don't rinse bottles very often because I have a lot of them. So I don't um I don't get through them quite as easily. But two um recently, two whiskies I have on my on my shelf that have turned over more than more than twice have been whiskies that I've tasted blind in the in the V pub. I think each it's time a, I've been each time yeah. I've been ordering it online while we were still live. <laughs> so well, that's it's one of the just... beauties of a blind challenge as well. I remember you discovered yeah, the Glen Wivis, the yeah, yeah. 2018 Glen Wivis here as well, and and loved that. And it's again, it's one of these ones that when it runs dry, you replace it again, which is a rare thing nowadays to have that kind of that loyalty, I suppose. You have that capacity as well because I think whiskey is getting harder and harder to get a hold of. When people find out about how good it is, then just like that, it disappears off the shelves. And it's a shame if the prices have gone up because that's yeah, it's been it's been lovely to see Indri at some festivals as well. So they were in London last yep. year. I saw them at the London Whiskey Show, which um, which was great. Managed to get down and have a chat with them, which was really good. And it be, um, it's really good for you to walk up to them and talk about how much you love the product. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can yeah. just get fangirl about it a wee bit, and yeah. and that's kind of nice for them to hear as well. Um, yeah. So I wonder if it's retailers that have decided there's not many places mm -hmm. this in stock, it's in demand, bump the prices up, or whether it's a strategy that they come in cheap and then start to crank the prices up and yeah. kind of treat it as a loss leader, which would be a wee bit of a shame. Regardless, yeah. I'm a big fan as well, and I think it's a great pick. Yeah. Well, Okay, Jim, over to you, my friend. Well, first of all, I want to know what Irish whiskies Julie's had because uh, uh, Indri Trini is very superior to most Irish whiskies that I've had. <laughs> 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 I'm a big fan of Indri Trini as well, but I wouldn't, to me, I wouldn't, cons well, I mean, obviously, that's the thing. This is all very subjective. So, to Julie, that's a daily sipper. This is my daily sipper, and I've been watching the the chat in the background, and I think of I'll maybe surprise a few people with this that this was my choice. Glenmo, ten year old, the Glenmo Orangey, ten year old, and as a matter of fact, I actually stopped on the way home from work today and picked this bottle up. Uh, I have one in my cabinet, but it's the old branding. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I just it, it felt wrong to open it, uh, so I just <laughs> stopped and picked this one up. As a, as a, and just that Ben Morangy 10 year old to me, Ben Morangy are actually my, and, and I shouldn't, I feel bad even saying this because it doesn't sound right. They're my Glen, they're, they're my guilty pleasure distillery. And the reason I say that is that I feel that Ben Morangy aren't necessarily considered by the whiskey enthusiast as a, 
a sort of worthwhile distillery anymore. We don't tend to dwell in the Glen Moranges anymore. We've been there. That's a starter whiskey sort of thing. They have never, ever released anything that I have thought is so less hard. than decent. You know, yep. it, it's, yes, this is bald. It's chill filtered. Uh, I, I believe, as far as I know, everything is natural color from Glen Morangie, although maybe I'm wrong there, but uh, I think um, Bill Lumsden is is brilliant and just everything that he's done and just, it's a simple whiskey and that's what a, an everyday, to me, sipper should be an inexpensive, easily yep. accessible. As I said, I stopped at the supermarket and picked this up on my way home. So it's, it's you know, it's something that you can buy. Maybe it's dangerously easy to get your hands on uh not like injury uh not like it used uh, to be, it used to be. <laughs> remember we're trying remember we're trying to sell this up people i'm running for president <laughs> next year um so uh <laughs> um, and, and it, may, it might just be on the injury thing it might just be right now remember this is an indian producer and i guess that these things come in by the container load and it's just yeah. waiting for a kind of restock or that that kind of thing sorry i should say that no you're Jen, right i think and, and, I, I, I think it's interesting you call it a guilty pleasure I love Glen Morangy. I They've had so many expressions have come out of Glen Morangy that have just been fabulous. And despite that being a 40% sipper right there in front of you, that's my pineapple cubes whiskey. I always get pineapple, tropical fruit from it at 10 years old. Ex-bourbon as well. Ex-bourbon is not as common as it should be out there in core ranges, but uh, Glen Morangy embraced their, their heritage there. One of the first distilleries to fully embrace uh, ex-bourbon maturation and put it out there. Just it's inoffensive. That's one of the things. It's inoffensive, you know, so you're not, you never have to fight with it. You, it's not an analyzing whiskey. You've done it once you've done it once, you've done it. Sit down, enjoy it. You don't have to overanalyze it. And and just, it's sweet malt uh, and just lovable, I think. Is How it, much is did it. you pay for it, Jim, when you picked it up today? Pounds. I forgot to say that was something else we've got to throw in. Wow. 28 pounds. What show is you know, that? <laughs> That's that's your test goes at the moment. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. There you go. So. Superb. Well done, Jim. Right, Pete. How can you compete with that? Well, the other candidates put forward some really, really great drams. Uh, three brilliant scotch. But I would like you all, you beautiful people watching, to indulge me and go for possibly the most non scotch, scotch like whiskey with the beautiful. <laughs> Cotswolds, I think it's now referred to as their signature release. It's the easy to grab one. It's the supermarket staple. As you can see, this bottle is sealed solely due to the fact that I've now gone through three of them. I know Julie's on her third Indie Trinity. This is currently now my fourth bottle. And I will open it shortly and turn my microphone off because I have learned this microphone picks up everything. That's okay. So I'll save the unveiling and I'll do it slowly after we've all decided this bottle is the winner. You say everyday sipper, you say breakfast dram. This has got more cereal notes than a bowl of shreddies. It is easy, yet you can dig deep into it. It is full of life. It's a young spirit. It's a cheap drink. I've picked this one. I think this bottle in my hand was £25. They often sit at 35 can easily be grabbed under that price. And it's not scotch. We're whiskey promiscuous. Be promiscuous with me and pick. Cotswolds. Oh, that's the slickest pitch. That is the that slickest still, pitch. Yeah. Okay. You, you can come yeah. back again. Listen, we've got a, a wee um, a suggestion from Daniel Williams saying a format change suggestion. Let people pitch the bottle first. Most votes are already in before the pitch. So does that mean if you click on the vote, you're not able to then re-click and change your mind? Because, Daniel, I think that would be critical. But if people are able to change their mind, it matters not. So let me know if that's happening. The reason that I wanted to put the thing out there first is that I didn't want people to pick based on solely the person putting it forward. Um, and that, that was the, the, the sense behind that. So let me know if, if you click on that poll. I can't because I've created the poll. If you can click on, by the way, you guys participate, you can go on the YouTube chat and I'm click on you. Can't. Guys are saying you can't change your mind. You can't change your mind. So once you're locked in, you're locked in. Hmm. We can't change. No, we cannot change the vote. Okay. In that case, uh, 
we're still going to go ahead with this one. <laughs> but I, I think that's reasonable. And while you're putting forward your pitches, that gives me time to create the poll each time. And then we can have a, a quick to and fro and a chat with the, the, the well, people are de deciding after they've heard all our four pitches. But let's close out this daily sipper category. Let's go in now and kill off this vote before it changes. Come on for the injury. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. In fourth place with 9% of the vote is Indri Trini. Come on. We're Scotch lovers. We're Scotch lovers. It seems Come the entire on. community, despite the fact that you're all across the planet, you're still Scotch lovers. I encourage you fully, if you get a chance to pick up an injury trini for a decent price, you will not. Julie and I will stake our reputations on it. You will not be disappointed. In third place with 11% of the vote, we're Scotch lovers, Jeff. I'm sorry, buddy. We've got Cotswolds. Signature. Between Jim and I, two scotches, the Campbellton Lock against the Glenmorne G10. Second place got an impressive 24% of the vote. But taking the lead with 56% is Campbelltown Loch. The shot <laughs> at Campbelltown. <laughs> Since I cannot do the, the humble kind of just, I have to just go with the <laughs> I am very pleased. I suspect it might be the only one I win tonight, but we go with You it. get the Campbelltown vote this time. That's fine. I get the Campbelltown vote. Sure you've vote. had your shot. Yeah, we'll all overshare of that tonight. Yeah. Poll is ended, so I'm putting in the scores now. <laughs> very happy <laughs> to give myself Congrats. four points on that one. Well done. <laughs> what was that? What was that, Miss Jeff? It's just congrats, that was all. Like, if congrats. people was able to vote after, I feel like that speech I've been preparing in the mirror for 20 minutes would have won. Over. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you um, said it was a tactical we. It was yeah. clearly a, a speech. Mind games. How Cotswolds <laughs> two votes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I'm seeing it. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Legg is, is telling me off, saying that was an aggressive, that was a pretty aggressive gesture. Does that mean something different in Scotland? Uh, probably not, but we're maybe just a bit more familiar with it. It's like round you rather than up you, Roy's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Lucky with Molly's got it. Round you rather than up you, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Wrap it round you, that's right. Whiskey with Molly is saying taps off Aquaviti, and Andrew Butler is saying Aquaviti. I was disappointed. What were you disappointed in, Andrew? You were disappointed. It wasn't Andrew. That, that he wanted injury, yeah. In the really whiskey shop, that's maybe Mike gets in. Be interesting to do a before and after poll, absolutely. And Rob is saying, I think it ruins the reveal more than anything. Ooh, okay. Well, uh, what what ruins the, the reveal? If we, uh, I, I suppose that what we what we're taking picking up is that we maybe need to do the poll after the four bottles have been put forward. Okay, so we'll try that for the next one. Nothing lost. Uh, uh, oh, uh, past whiskey yeah. Tim is saying he's bought me a dram and said if Glenmorangie did the exact same 10 year casks at 50% non chill filtered natural colour we would be shouting from the hilltops it's virtue, I want one uh, Tim if you've been tuning into this channel for long enough you'll know how much I feel about that exact concept, they will occasionally flirt with something very close to it for their annual releases but they need a core range with higher ABV they would do very, very well. Pitch and then vote Aquaviti. Bruno Martins is saying perhaps two times same poll. Oh, it's confusing. It's confusing, Bruno. Andrew Butler is saying I bought Indri Trini due to FOMO and now the list is a misfit. I want to give it away. Ah. Oh. I, and now list it as a misfit. I want to give it away. That's incredible. I tell you what, in a, a tasting room full of 60 people back in November, Andrew, eh, the Indri Trini was in the lineup and it not only competed very well, but it won. That was despite being the Indian whiskey and despite being the cheapest whiskey uh, in the lineup. And it was up against some fantastic, fantastic whiskeys. Um, and it did really, really well. But that's exactly what Jim was talking about earlier tonight, how subjective all of this absolutely is and how recommendations you often have to 
try and align your palate with the folk uh, that you're taking recommendations from. Are you going to read off the correct answers from my comment on Patreon? <laughs> so Jimmy's put forward his, which is, of course, are the true winners. <laughs> um, yes, Jimmy, I, I may take an opportunity to do that if you mind me a wee bit later. Tommy, I'm going to say pitch without naming the bottle. Okay, so we've got some consensus there. We'll try that for the next category. Impress your guests. So what will we do? Well, we mix it up a wee bit. We'll just skip forward one and we'll, instead of me kicking it off this time, maybe Julie, you can kick it off this time. What do you think? Okay. Uh, so am I telling bottle? you what the bottle is? Or am yes. I just to... Your yeah. pitch starts now and I will start to create the poll as we do so. Okay. So I have to confess that um, each time I do one of these competition style things where I put forward favourite whiskies. Nine times out of ten I do end up with a whisky that has come from work. Now I will okay. lay my lay my vote down on this that this is hands down one of the best Bowmores I've ever had. So this is Whiskey Sponge edition number 74. It is an 18 year old Bowmore. It comes in at 55.3% ABV and it has every tropical note under the sun. It's just delightful. It's cast strength, obviously. It's cast strength. It is non-chill filtered. It is a decadent drinks bottling. I know I've gone corporate. I know that I've, but to be Listen, fair, if you're if you're willing to step forward with the bravery yeah. that, and I just said, step out to you and say, you're going to be doing this, and you, you've got a job in the industry, Julie, this is your floor. You can do whatever you like. And if you choose to go on brand for any of your picks, then you, you absolutely have my blessing to do so. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. as long as that, if I'm one of your guests, <laughs> that this is <laughs> that That's what you get. Right. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. But I think, I, I think all too often that there are certain whiskies that core ranges are not necessarily as impressive as independently bottled versions of them um, and I used to previously work for Elixir Distillers before I worked for Decadent Drinks and we also had some beautiful Bowmores labelled um, is um, hands down it's spendy it's definitely an expensive one it's definitely a considered purchase but if you get an opportunity, if you see me at any whiskey festival or um, the lights, I'll nine times out of ten have some of this on me and I'll be able to let you taste it. It is the best Bowmore. Sherry Cask, sorry, should have said that. Sherry Casked, um, 18 year old Bowmore. Wow. Wow. I did win the last one. You said it was a wee bit spenny. How much is it? It's 350. Ooh. Yeah, we all want to be Julie's guest, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we all I know. Come up at Shea but, Julie. <laughs> but the thing is that, I, and I will say this, and this isn't a pitch for decadent drinks, but if you do follow someone's palate, an independent bottler's palate, and you know that you can trust the fact that they're bottling stuff that you're going to enjoy, let me assure you, this is worth all of it. Yes. Listen, I've yet to have I've, I've yet to have a sponge bottling that is that you didn't like. Never anything other than remarkable. Absolutely. Listen, before I move on to Jim, uh, it's happened. Our um, mystery person has uh, swooped in. Uh, this is a thing that's happening, Julie. I don't know if you've got the chat up, uh, but you've maybe seen that, that uh, there's a super chat come in with no comment uh, whatsoever from someone we don't even know if it's a gentleman called Wook. Or a lady called Wook. Okay. But we've got someone called Wook who's swooped in uh, for the third week on the row, at least the third week in the row, with a very, very generous super chat for us all. Um, I say for us all, I mean me. <laughs> um, and I've still to get to the bottom of who this is. Yes. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to, with their permission, maybe I have to just, I've got their email because they're a patron supporter. I could email them, but I've tried messaging them on Patreon and uh, still silence. So maybe they're trying to preserve this mystery or whatever. But my goodness, can we all raise a wee glass to the generosity that's come in from Europe one more time to, to Wook? Slanjava to you. And he's also topping up everyone's Barfly memberships while he's at it. My goodness. 
Good stuff. Okay. Thank you, Wook. Jim. Or Wook, as people call me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Anybody can claim his identity, let's be honest. (laughs) Uh, Sort of stealing from what Julie did in the first uh, round. And, And Julie... Very impressed with what you did in this round until you told me the price, and then I. I know. I see, I shouldn't have done that. That's yeah, uh-huh. please don't like that influence. <laughs> my, um, what are we on here? Impress your guests. Is Nika Yoichi? Oh, this is our second world whiskey in the mix. No, this third, is one that, and, and from yeah. two years ago, Roy, on your uh, blind tasting on the the Sunday after Glasgow Whiskey Festival, this was the one that impressed them. Um, and I now, what I will say, and I'm going to add it in now before I forget about it later, is that out of my five choices of tonight, this is the only bottle I haven't replaced yet because I'm still working on my first bottle. Every sure. bottle that I bought the night, I've replaced at least once, or every bottle I've I've suggested and I've replaced at least once. So this just to me, when when you talk about impressing guests, the first thing I think is right, who are my guests? So you talked earlier on about friends, having friends in the whiskey. I didn't really have a lot of friends until I had my whiskey friends. Ah, uh, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> But um, it was one of those things that I did, of course I did, but there were, yeah. Um, so we believe one of those you, things, the whiskey friends are an, a difficult thing. So trying to impress people who are both whiskey oriented, whiskey enthusiasts and not whiskey enthusiasts, this to me is one of the best whiskeys I have ever had to, to tick those boxes. And that it's such a delicate thing. They're, everything about it is just delicate and beautiful. Uh, so it lends itself to so those people who don't like heavily peated whiskies, but they can take just a wee hint of it every now and again. Or those who just, this is just, and the, the more you get into it, the better it gets. Yes, it's slightly expensive. Yes, it's bottled at 45%. It's, it's usually you're looking around the 75 pounds a bottle for some that's non aged state of Japanese. But the thing about it is, guests love this thing about, oh, it's Japanese. I haven't had yeah. any Japanese whiskey yet. I haven't tried that. I don't know what that's like. So, this to me is one of the best, if not the best, introduction to Japanese whiskies. In the world, in the world, and uh, and and as I said, just a fantastic Japanese gentle. Uh, everything's so soft and fragrant and and beautiful about it. Uh, fantastic. And, how and much? Jim, ask, how much? Did, how much did you pay? Say seven. I think it was about seventy-five. I paid. I, I just noticed uh, in the last couple of days that certain large um, online places have dropped the price on it a wee bit, but just a wee bit. I saw it. I saw it north of eighty for a while there, but like you, I, I've I've since checked the pricing, and uh, you're spot on. You're somewhere in the order of uh, seventy three to seventy eight quid. So uh, you're but you're bang on the money. Good stuff. I'm glad it's another wee story of the V Pub as well. I'm glad you picked that up. And you mentioned the blind taste in, in 2022, Jim. Not only did lots of people enjoy that, it won. And it bo- both of the bigger events that I've hosted in Glasgow, the 60 people events, it's been uh, the first year it was Yoichi. Roddy came up to me with a glass of it in his hand and he said, please tell me this is scotch. <laughs> and said, last year it was Seve. <laughs> please tell me this is scotch. And it was Andrew Trini. <laughs> it was Andrew Trini, yep. So it's it's just the way we have to keep our mind open. You know, scotch has to, as we showed on the Six Nations as well, a wee bit, Scotch has to always try and be the best it can be. Fantastic, Jim. Uh, Roy, could I just before I could I ask you to drop me out for one second, please? Just so to drop can, you out. Um, yes, just yes. so I can uh... <laughs> drop one out. <laughs> <laughs> there he's dropped out. <laughs> I think he's going to go away and pour himself a big fat uh, Yoichi with the sounds of things. <laughs> Jeff, my friend, take it away. I might even try this. Uh, in order for you to, based on your last campaign, I think this one's going to be a good one too. This is the impress your guests, my friend. Go ahead. 
Um, so there's been a couple of very good, very good drinks. Can't argue with them. Happy if either of them win. But let me throw something different into the mix or maybe throw something different into the blend. And that is Compass House, Orchard House. Firstly, everyone likes a bargain, especially me. So they're pricey bottles. That Bowmore's a bit pricey. Japanese whiskey, a little bit pricey. You can get this dirt cheap. And it is, as it says on the tin, this lovely looking tin, might I add. Yeah. Uh, it is really impressive. It's a fantastic fruit explosion. It can lure in non-whiskey people. It can appease whiskey enthusiasts. It can impress anyone. And not only is the liquid great, the facts that you can tell about this bottle, you can find everything, what goes into it, the mixture, really impress everyone with your knowledge or maybe not know your knowledge, but you can read off a website like I can. <laughs> this is guaranteed to impress not just your wallet, but your friends, your enemies, and anyone else who are impressive enough to share this dram with. Oh, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to compete with, I have to say. Jim's away just now, so we've got a, well, I've got a three person layout for a minute. Um, I'm Sorry, a I fan. lost my sound for a second there. I had to go out and come back in. I no missed, bother, no bother. I missed your pitch. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, as long as people put their hands up, like this is, this is, the... <laughs> no, it's fine. I think anybody that's, uh, you know, all of the whiskeys tonight are not going to appeal to everyone, but most mm -hmm. of the people are stepping up to pay, what, 40 quid, 42 quid for that compass box, Jeff? You can get it under 40 if you look, I believe in you, Roy. Yeah, if you're a bargain you can... hunter like Jeff. Yeah. 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 desperate like me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's a cracking pick i think it's when it came onto the scene three years ago now it really really impressed everyone that compass box were bringing out this beautiful tall bottle lovely artwork uh, and i think when it launched it was 39 pounds if i remember well people just absolutely loved it yeah wee bit of smoke interestingly a wee bit of smoke especially in a finish I always feel in a dry glass there's a wee puff of smoke there but anyway it's down to me now isn't it to put forward my thing i'm gonna i'm gonna leave you up on screen so that we can get reactions <laughs> is that with us anybody that's been hanging about the v pub for long enough by the way i'll get back into the chat once we put this poll in there i'll be able to pick up some of your comments and things don't think i'm ignoring you uh, I can see Mike McLaughlin has just uh, joined the Aquaviti Barflies. Thank you very much, Mike. I'll be dropping in to hang out with you all soon enough. Anybody that's been hanging around the VPUB for long enough will be potentially exhausted of me talking about this. Maybe to the point that they've gone out and they've actually picked up a bottle to see what the fuss is about. Like the Campbelltown Loch, this is the bottle I knocked on the floor earlier, by the way. <laughs> Um, like the Campbelltown Loch, when I first started to love this whiskey, it was paler. And as time's gone on, it's become darker. The most recent expressions have been a wee bit darker. But this, for me, um, it's crept up now. It's in the high 60s to buy this now. When I first started raving about it, it was 54 quid. Maybe even a wee bit less than that is Spayburn's 15-year-old. 46% ABV, look at the information on the label, non-chill filtered, natural colour, 15-year age statement, a 15-year age statement for sub £70. That's great that we get all that presentation on the label, but the whiskey has to back it up. There is no one that I am aware of that I've poured this for that's come to this house, if we're talking about impress your guests, that has not said, aye, that's a good whiskey. It really is a good whiskey. I know a lot of people see Speyburn as a bit of a factory. Depending on when you came into whiskey as well, you can often see Speyburn as a bit of a bottom shelf brand. But anybody that connects with the 15 or the 18 year old, as soon as they get their head around it, they'll work out very, very quickly, especially sipping it blind, that this is a special malt for the price. It's still available. It is utterly transparent and natural, full integrity forward. We don't know what the marriage of casks is, but we don't care when the quality is this good. The paler ones are probably more refill sherry and more, more ex-bourbon. The darker ones, maybe a bit more active sherry in there. Doesn't matter which one you pick up. I would suggest the paler ones are my preference, but the more recent darker ones are every bit as delicious. I think it's fantastic. And with that, I think we've covered everyone and I can drop the poll in now and see where the poll goes. Cheers, everyone. Is Jim back? Give me a thumbs up, Jim, if you're good to join us again. He is. He's good shape. 
So we've got the Sponge Bomor 18 year old, the Sponge Edition 74, up against Japan's Nika Yuichi, up against Compass Box's Blended Mall Orchard House, up against Spayburn's 15 year old, and a, a bit of a VPUB favourite. Actually, all of these are, are VPUB favourites, and I, I guess the Bomor 18 year old Julie would be a VPUB favourite too if, if I could afford it. Uh, I can't wait to be a guest at your house and uh, um, turn up and <laughs> get, get a wee pour of that. That would be amazing. Uh, but the poll's clicking away. I'm going to jump into the lounge and see who all the folk I've been missing while well, that's been going on. Codger is saying, should we have a Wook emoji? <laughs> ah, it's a good idea. <laughs> Let's. I'll have your suggestions for a Wook emoji. If he's going to make donations like that, he certainly deserves it. Lee J. Brown is saying, sympathy vote for uh, hey, Whiskey Novice. Oh, I don't I don't know, Lee J. I don't think so. I don't think it's a sympathy vote at all. Um, Stefan Toth is in. Good to see you. Sorry, Stefan. It's not Stefan. It's Stephen. Sorry, buddy. Stephen Toth is in saying, where can we purchase some Wook merchandise? <laughs> That's right. He's, he's only three weeks in the door and he's become an, an absolute legend. Uh, Rick Johnson is saying, Roy, your recycled review introduced me to Compass Box Orchard House. Fantastic. I, I hope you've picked up, Rick, that I was speaking about it very positively uh, in, in, uh, in that review as well. So our, uh, Jeff has put forward a, a really strong contender. M.M. Carston is saying, uh, the smoke only is in the later releases of Orchard House containing some Kalila in the mix. Ooh, is that true, M.M. Carston? I remember, which probably means I'm wrong. <laughs> some of even the first releases that I got my hands on, I didn't pick up smoke when I first poured it and things. Um, I didn't even believe that there was any peated whiskey in there, but then in the empty glass, there was that kind of, that sense of smoke that's it's sometimes left behind. I'm exhausted about being exhausted by it, says Jimmy Legg, talking about the Spayburn 15. Well, you can listen to Jimmy Legg or you can listen to Roy. It's up to you. I don't even know if Jimmy Legg's got a Spayburn 15. It's maybe not even available to him in Nova Scotia. Got to go with Aquaviti on this one for sure, says Graham Young. Thank you for your support, Graham. And Whiskey with Molly saying, the bottle you poured for me that impressed me was Bamor Atlantic Sea Salt. Ooh, good call. I maybe should have considered that one. Wasn't even in the run-up, Ben. Difficult to get hold of these days, still available here and there. Whiskey with uh, Games, Matt Bishop is saying, I had the Spayburn 18 as my choice for this category. Very close, same distillery, just three years difference, right, Matt? Excess to Scotch is saying, oh, sorry, it's jumped, buddy. My goodness. Spayburn is my daily sipper. Oh, nice one. And Jimmy is saying, as the Bomber doesn't win, this game has no point of any kind, Aquavite. Remember, you're a guest. <laughs> Jimmy's in one of his moods tonight, so he's, <laughs> we're being judged here. I certainly feel like I'm being judged, but that's okay. Jimmy Fatsalari is saying, but more for those who can afford it is clearly the most impressive, in my opinion. Are we ready to freeze the vote? I'll give everyone 10 seconds to make sure their vote is in, and then I'm going to kill it. Peter Lee is in. Good to see you, buddy. Black Fen is here saying... I think you're correct. The first batch of Orchard House had about 1.5% Kalila in it. And everyone is saying, uh, mine, uh, my uh, impress your guest is the older bottling of Glendronach 18 with the older juice. Oh, aye. Well, Chris, if we all had a wee time machine machine or uh, the money to pick them up at auction, we're talking about the Billy Walker old overaged Allardyces, aren't we? Tom Elmer is saying, got to go with available great whiskey, Orchard House. Okay. You've had your 10 seconds now. I'm going to pick these now. Wow. Okay, last place. Picking up one point and 15% of the vote is Nika Yoichi. Wow. I had a feeling. Third, third place, picking up 21% of the vote, clearly proving the entire lounge utterly wrong tonight. Apart, well, that proves 79% of the lounge is wrong tonight, is Spayburn, 15-year-old. So I pick up only two points from that. That means it's between Compass Box Orchard House and Sponge's Bamore 18 year old. The winner, of course, and yet not a huge surprise. The winner is the Bamore 18 year old with 39% of the vote. Oh. Wow. Ready. Wow. I have okay. to say, I have all of the other whiskeys on my shelf. Wow. So we're it's picking good, good stuff. This is but why yeah. I think 
this content might be good because it's not about what wins and it's not about who of us to wins tonight, but actually is. It's, it's about what we're offering, what we're, we're, we've put thought into this and what we're putting forward for people to actually enjoy. It's good recommendations. Let's end this poll now and get ready for our next category. Well done. That's boy. incredible. I'm so, I am I am surprised by that one. Thought I had that be. one in the bag. <laughs> good. I'll watch this is good. Buy one tomorrow. Not. <laughs> it, it's it's getting interesting. It's getting interesting. And what's nice is when I kill that poll, uh, it drops in the results. So that they might change a wee bit in terms of percentage or whatever between me announcing it and killing it. But you can see it's there for posterity as well, which is really cool. All right. We need to keep this going. We need to go into the third category, which is our best mixer, which I'm going to preface by saying I had a bit of a problem with this because there's not a lot of VPUB content out there that talks about mixing whiskies. It took Julie, you'll know what I'm going to say here. It took me to sit down with Roddy for Roddy to teach me how much the quality of the whiskey, the, the difference it made to the mixed drink was oh, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And if you you can you can make a mixed drink with a very cheap blend and it works perfectly. It can sing. It can make an absurdly inexpensive blend sing, and then you can make another cocktail with something that you would probably. I remember Roddy making a Rob Roy with Arden Morkin's Adventure or Single Cask, right? But it just made such a compelling drink that you you are willing to sacrifice drams mm -hmm. to have that wonderful, wonderful cocktail, co especially if it's made by Roddy, of course. Yeah. But it does. it is a thing. Arguably, there's not enough VPUB content to mix drinks. Maybe there's plenty, depending on your opinion. I don't know if I took this concept forward. I don't know if I would keep it in there, but in honour of the original Five Whiskey Challenge, it's here. And to take away the first pitch tonight for this one is Jim. Oh, I, well, the thing about it is there's distilleries nowadays making whiskies and saying it's a mixer. Strange. It's made to be a mixer, which to me personally is nonsense. But anyway, the only whiskey I mix, so that I had to, this has to be a personal thing. We, we can't, I know there's broad brush strokes with these things, but this is personal to all of us. And the only whiskey I mix is bourbon. And and I'm looking generally around the summer. I love nothing more than a bourbon and cola. So, and the one that I have put forward is Elijah Craig, small batch. And I've oh. actually, yet again. Uncorking. <laughs> uh, so why not? Um it's it is a good it has to be a good bourbon i remember uh the whiskey dictionary and um, bill doing a lot of work with bourbons in the early days and about mixers and talking about bourbons to mix and and it was it wasn't necessarily elijah craig but it was like if you're a whiskey enthusiast if you're a whiskey enjoyer pick a decent bourbon don't there's no point in going in with a, a half-assed uh Tennessee whiskey uh, or uh, just sort of <laughs> half decent bourbon. You know, it needs to be a, something that's going to stand up to your actual mixer. And yep. I think yet again for an affordable, I think I paid 38 pounds for this Elijah Craig uh, small batch. Now, don't get me wrong. Their barrel proof is a different story altogether. I mean, that's something that you do not mix in my opinion, but uh but something a good, as I say, sturdy bourbon. Yep. Uh, and and I'm, and this to me is a good sturdy bourbon. Something that's going to stand up to your mixer, and and something that you can enjoy with a mix with ice. Something in the summer, still get the kick that you want. Something you can enjoy, but not too affordable or not too expensive. Yeah. Good, good stuff, Jim. Good stuff. How much did you pay for it? Thirty-eight pounds. The same. Thirty-eight pounds. I paid for it. Good stuff, Pete. Can you compete with that? Um, well, it's a great suggestion. Um, as the good Roy said, our hero Roddy. Please emojis in the chat for him. 
he said a good spirit can make a great cocktail and he's not wrong so i'm taking a great spirit with Ardnamurkin ad which makes an even greater cocktail like i oh. love old fashions and an Ardner fashion is next level stuff like the saltiness in this and it also works well with coke salty coke sounds strange tastes great dr pepper you know cherries salt savory oh it's just it's like you're at the beach with your family it is what you want in a cocktail and truth i've not prepared much to say about this one or with anyone i'm just going with my heart but i want to speak to you people watching that this is the ultimate mixer please ignore the droopy eye focus on the bottle this is what you want to mix in thank you for your time <laughs> He's playing the chat. He's got the chat lit up with the Roddy emojis. So he's pulled his Roddy Joker out on this one. He's doing everything. I can't believe it. You, you should be running for the American presidency. <laughs> Everybody would be jumping up. <laughs> superb, superb, Pete. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, you can Pete. call me whatever you like, as long as it's winner. <laughs> President <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Senator <laughs> Jeff. Fantastic. Just great stuff. Um, I suppose it's it's me next for this one, is it? Uh, yeah. if, if we if we follow the order, okay. Um, I'm going to take everything Jim said, and everything Jeff said, and double down. You're spot on. You're both spot on. Really, really interesting. I never considered what you talked about when you talked about bringing salt into the equation, Jeff. But definitely the spirit that you use. And you experiment, you experiment, experiment, and you work out these things do make a big difference. However, the most consistent, the most consistent performer, sipping neat in a tall drink with just soda or ginger and in any amount of cocktails, and I think it's got a lot to do with the ABV, but bang for buck, I cannot see past Wild Turkey 101. 50% ABV. Look at the wee dreep that's left in the bottom of this. Let's do a recycled review on this one. <laughs> that's playing the chat, that is. <laughs> I would be tossing it as well, but I've had enough bottles falling tonight. I think it's just, it's got all the, the sweet and the roasted nuts and all the kind of cherries. It's almost, when I sip this now, it's almost, it makes me think What's the name of the cherries, Julie? The wee jar of cherries that we... The Luxardo. The Luxardo, Luxardo cherries. cherries. That's because yeah. I've now associated this with my... Oh, it's just... Here's the crazy yeah. thing. A lot of us shop in supermarkets in the UK. I hope that wherever you are, you're able to pick up your world, your Wild Turkey 101 for a decent price. But the others in the chat here tonight will testify to the fact I can pick this up for a ridiculous £25 at times. It's just, it's just fabulous, and that extra ABV when you're when you're leaning towards your more sturdy bourbons. I, I like, I think that was the phrase you used, Jim. You've got that sturdy heft of the wild turkey juice itself, but at fifty percent ABV, for me and the price point it's at, this is the thing I'm picking as a mixer every time. Ben whiskey with Molly suggested I should use the glass house. He's got a very good shout, but I prefer to sip that one neat. Julie. Over to you. No, you just finished your best mixer on the sentence. I prefer that neat. And <laughs> downstairs from me here with Jeff saying, Ardna working, I drink it neat and drink it as a mixer and drink it with Dr. Pepper and all the rest of it. I think, to be fair, Jim and I have gone with proper mixer whiskies. And this is my ride or die mixer whiskey. Now, this I drink with my family. I drink this with my mum. My mum, this is her drink of choice. This is what introduced me to whiskey in the first place. Um, quite, quite a while ago, quite a long time ago, this was Bless how I was mom. introduced to whiskey. That's my mummy, yes. My brother drinks it. My, um, my youngest niece has started to show an interest in it although she's not quite over the hurdle of being served in a pub yet um but it's it's a ride or die whiskey and i will stand by this that this is the whiskey i mix not a highball not anything like that diet coke 
And White and Mackay. White and Mackay. Put that push it right up to the camera here there, Julie. So it's the bog standard 40%. White and Mackay. White and Mackay. At any given time, there is a litre of this juice in my house. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that I drink that with Diet Coke quite readily. Where I'm drinking single malt whiskey. So I went from one extreme to the other. My impress, my guests, was £350 a bottle. Just saying. And my <laughs> mixer whiskey is 20 quid a litre if you buy it in the supermarket. You'd soon know where you stand and Julie's standings when you walk into the house <laughs> you reach there a night in the guy or a bull. <laughs> but it depends. It depends because if, if she gave you she'd offer you a single dram minimal effort at the Bomo 18, or she'd go into the oh, pure and make you a mixed That's drink. With the... <laughs> yeah. We're on the liters of this stuff. And yeah, and it's also an indication that your family is well, Jim. Just saying, you know. So <laughs> If oh, I, I need to it. impress you, I'll I give you it. some more. That's how you know that you're part of the clan if you're in Julie's house and she offers you a white Mackay. If you're in, well, in the crowd. White Mackay right. was my my uncle's winner in that uh, I bought him a bottle of Dalmore 12 year old as a as a <laughs> thank you for something he did for us. And uh and he pretty Small much kids. gave it away to somebody else because <laughs> White and Mackay was his whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's, do you know it's it's not it's not a whiskey I would drink neat. It was, I followed the brief and I went with a whiskey that was my best mixer. Wait, McKay. Well, my father-in-law, Peter Wright, I don't know if he's ever had a shout out on the V-Pub. He definitely deserves it because despite being a teetotaler, he does watch along. But he does recall his younger days. And when he was a youngster, he used to declare his two best pals as White and Mackay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Why would Julie ruin Diet Coke, says Al. <laughs> Julie and Rickman is saying, what an inclusive community we are. Every dram has a place. I like that spirit. I like that. And I think that we, we do suffer when, when we analyze and we have a wee Glen Cairn and our tulip shape and we're going for aroma and palette and we're doing all these things. We're writing notes. And we're getting serious. And we're comparing and comparing. Sometimes we forget to relax a wee bit. And sometimes we forget that that if you, especially when you overhear someone else ordering a whiskey mixed with Coke or something like that, the worst thing you can do is judge. I mean, it's it's everybody's drink to drink with as they like. Mm. You might have a completely different take, but we have to. And oftentimes I, I hear the people judging people who do mix or do odd things with their whiskey haven't even tried the things that they're judging. We all love malt whiskey for malt whiskey's sake, bourbon for bourbon's sake, blends, blend, whatever it is. We love to sip it. We love to understand it. We love to dig into the flavor. That's our lane. But never, ever lock yourself off from relaxing and just having a wee bit of pleasure not doing that all the time. I think sometimes people like you, Julie, people like Roddy, other folk out there have taught me to chill out sometimes <laughs> about the whole thing. Excess to Scotch is saying, for me, it's a monkey shoulder as the mixer. Good call. Uh, an amazing thing. You remember that monkey shoulder is only about a decade old and it's taken the world by storm. Andrew Butler is saying, my two pals are Gordon and McPhail. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Sutherland is saying, I like to advocate blends. White and Mackay is just a step too far. I'll drink grouse and black bottle though. Aye, but you've not been at, Ju at Julie's and you've not seen what she mixes it with, Ryan. Donald Pass Whiskey is saying, wishing I had put away some of the uh, many World, Wild Turkey 101s I drank in the 80s. They were even better then and chased by people today. No doubt, no doubt at all. A wee bit of nostalgia in there, a wee bit of old school, a wee bit of time in a bottle. That that alchemy that makes magic, right? John's Drams is in. Good to see you, John. And he's saying, I've served someone an Anok 24 and Coke in my time. Uh, did you judge? Or were you happy to go ahead and do it? They're paying for it after all. And Gene Kelly is saying, Ardna is way too fine to be relegated to a mixing whiskey. But I don't think, Gene, that Jeff did that. He did contextualise it by saying, he caveated it by saying he sips it neat and he mixes. That's the best this is part. a no-brainer. The Wild Turkey is hands down the winner for both value and taste profile. And Martin Fielder is saying, so I wonder how many Americans choose bourbons as their main mixes. Mixers versus Scotch. Okay. Listen, I'm going to give everyone a few more seconds. 
10 seconds to close out your vote, to make your decision and to jump on it and decide what you're voting for. And then we'll reveal to everybody. But we've got a White Mackay up against an Elijah Craig small batch, up against an Ardemark and AD, up against Wild Turkey 101. What's your prediction for the winner, guys? You're on. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> Philip Wagner saying, I was recently experimenting with mixing Port Charlotte 10-year-old. Might sound counterintuitive, but the results were stunning. Roddy is a huge advocate of playing with smoky whiskies specifically. Um, that, uh, by the way, Roddy and I have got about three subjects on the go that we're trying to refine. If we can refine it into one VPUB, that would be amazing. If we can refine it into two, even better, and three, even better still. Um, but we've got these crazy ideas that none of them we can work out of. A way to make it work, but we're we're in discussions and they uh, were dead keen to get together soon. Uh, Daniel Williams is saying Elijah Craig is superb in a cocktail. Have you witnessed Roddy and I's chats at the whiskey club trying to work out how to make these things work, Julie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy. Papa Q saying tomato and twelve is a great mixer for me. Forty three percent as well, Papa Q. Okay, I'm locking the, the 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 poll out now. I'm taking the score now. Oh, this is quite conclusive. Fourth place with sixteen percent of the vote. Is White and Mackay. 16% is not bad, though. Thanks, guys. You should have talked much more about how you can pick up a bottle of it for 15 quid. <laughs> oh, I was going for litres at 20 quid, but there you go. <laughs> and, yeah, a litre for 20, that's right. Uh -huh. yeah. And third place, with 19% of the vote, is the Ardnamurchan AD, which means it's between that. Wild Worky... Wild Worky? <laughs> <laughs> Wild Turkey 101 in Elijah Craig's small batch. Wild, oh, Turkey, Wild Turkey takes Wild it with 43%. 43%. Wild Turkey takes it with four points, leaving Elijah Craig on three and 22% of the vote. End poll. Amazing. Amazing. I'm not going to, we're not going to add up the scores till the end, okay? There's a, there's a wee kind of flourish at the end that might change things too. Ryan is, uh, sorry, everyone to say, I, I, I need a good choice to balance out the sweetness of a rusty nail with a smoky whiskey. See, these are these are good things to talk about. There's Jeff is suggesting amazing rusty ever. nail it makes. An amazing rusty nail, fantastic. How would you make your rusty nail? Uh, big ice, bit of drambuie, uh, orange. Was it pith is his term? Whatever. I just get the little. Chocolate orange and just scrunch it up and throw it in. It's pretty much the same. Um, <laughs> really? Chocolate orange? <laughs> no, that was me trying to be funny. I don't like chocolate oranges. I got it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know a joke's a good one when you explain it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, generally, Rusty Nail is the one with Dram Bowie, is that correct? Yeah. Big block yeah. of ice, and then, oh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. So would you yeah. say Dram Bowie and, and Arnold Morgan 50-50? I would say 60, 40, or probably by the time I'm pouring that in the evening, it's probably about 60, 60. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, more after Merkin, because that like, ah, oh, savory, sweetie, oh, yeah. I'm happy it to come expensive. second from last, but it, if you can try it, I will recommend it. Jimmy Legg has bought us a dram to say Julie is either first or last. I like that about her wreck or win. <laughs> go hard or go home. That's it. Drabs, and Drabs has bought us a dram as well, saying anyone else freaking hate the new label for Glen eh, I have to say, when you hold it in your hands, it's much better than the photos suggest. It's a bit nicer, a bit more subtle. I think if they'd launched with that, we wouldn't be talking about it, but it's just a contrast against what they've had. Of course, Dribs and Drabs, thank you very much for your drama. I've also had a drum in from ba Brian Cabalas saying, uh, just checking in to say hello. I'm having a morning tea at work and I'll catch the replay tonight. Lovely guests you have. Cheers. Brian, lovely sentiment. Cheers to you too. I didn't dirty my well turkey glass because I just uh, nicked it for the bottle. <laughs> Good, let's move on to our fourth, our Friday night sipper. Now, of course, it's Thursday night, but we get it. I've used the wee couch emoji there. We're just going to relax, but we are aficionados. We don't want to relax with the cheap. We want to treat ourselves to the transition that is a Friday night with something decent. That's how I've interpreted this 
thing. I kicked off the last one. Has everyone kicked off? Anyone still to, to kick off? No, Pete. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I think it's your go. I'm terrible at this anonymity thing, haven't I? I think it's your go to kick us off then with how you would interpret a Friday Night Sipper and your nomination for it, buddy. So growing up, Friday was going out night and now it is get the baby to bed, sit on the sofa and just sink into the couch cushions after a long week. You know, you know what it's like working hard for your family, sweat on your brow all the time. It's the first chance you get to take a breath. So you want either a dram that you can sink in with and not think about anything or a dram that you can sit up at a desk, watch an amazing VPUB, catch it up, enjoy yourself and have a dram that you can deeply analyze. So I've gone for Glenn Morangi, Quinta Rubin, 14 year old. And it, this is the old branding. So if you have the new branding, it gives you a laugh as well. So it's a case <laughs> of this thing is just like juicy strawberries. It's a dessert. You don't need to pop down to Tesco's to buy an ice cream. You can pour this in a glass, sit and watch whatever the latest TV shows is. Love Island, Game of Thrones, Shogun, whatever tickles your pickle. And this will easily sip you into the weekend. Wow. That's the second time a Glenmorangie has appeared in tonight's session. Old, oh, the previous branding, right? You're pulling up there? Yeah. But Quinta Ruban specifically, Quinta Ruban is celebrating port cask maturation, port cask finishing. Uh, 14 years old. What's the ABV on it, Jeff? Um, very good question. I don't even think about it. It's that good a whiskey, but it is 46%. 46, yeah. And what's the, the perfect price? amount? Um, I picked mine up very cheaply, so I'm not too sure what it is anymore. I've, on a Friday night, you don't want to think about your wages. It's a long time till payday. Yeah. Oh, there's there's Jim pulling up his wee snap. snap. Great choice. Yep. Okay, Jim, what would the Whiskey Novice be putting forward as his Friday night sipper? Uh, Glenn Morangy, no. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it had to be, there had to be something Irish in it for me. Of course there did. And it had to be my favourite. Bang for buck. Bang for buck, mind you. Irish whiskey. The power is John's Lane. The uh, 12-year-old single pot still. This... As I said, I, I don't think in my cabinets there's been a bottle that has been replaced more than this. I just, every time one finishes, I just buy another one. And for 60, you're around 60 to 65 pounds a bottle now. Single pot still, 12 year old, 11 years first and second fill bourbon cast with an Oloroso finish, non chill filtered, uh, color. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but just, I just love it. I think it's the best single pot still bang for buck on the market. I am I'm convinced of it. Something that only you will still currently, if we're looking at that, not a competition, uh, but I mean, Scotch, Irish, whiskey thing, nobody, uh, Inch Derny have put down a single pot still, but you'll not see that for a while. Uh, so if you want single pot still of quality for price, the, the Paris John's Lane is that. And I, I, I openly admit that I don't like their branding uh, anymore. That it was a we, much, we, I think we were both fans of the previous. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a much more beautiful looking thing prior to it. But uh, I think Powers Whiskey has struggled to win a uh, modern generation so they changed their branding to try and make it look something yeah. relative to what the modern generation likes i would appear or it would appear but it, it's about to me it's about the juice in the bottle and i just think that the powers john's lane for 60 to 65 pounds for a 12 year old single pot still bottled at 46 percent non-chill filtered is still a good good quality uh, version of what you're asking for. And I mean, if you, if you held it up towards the, the likes of the red breast 12 year old, this is far, far superior in my opinion. So. I feel like I've just sat and watched a whiskey novice whiskey review for 
a single pot still. And I have to say, it's my favourite too, Jim. I think the reason is, I, I love the style. I have always loved the, the style of single pot still Irish. I think that's the only one that brings the spice. And I never know where that's, obviously it's probably coming from the oak, right? But you just never know. Um, it's. I think it's the most, the best presented at the best price, the best mix of it all. And it's got a 12 year age statement as well. It's a rare, rare mix. Just the, the and it's still what, 59 quid? Still I, would say, I, I would say 60 to 65, roughly. Yeah, okay. De depending on where you get it, aye. Yeah. So still one of the better value ones too. Really good pick. Uh, is it me up next, Julie? Will I take, will I take this one? Sure. I did go for Friday Night Sipper, but I like my Friday nights, and I don't get a lot of Friday nights out these days. It's just the way of it. Family tiredness at the end of the week, whatever it is, after all the running around, Friday night is your night where you just get to <laughs> sink into the couch and take in whatever's on the TV. I often don't get the choice of what's on the TV these days because of the other opinions in the house, but I do get the choice of what I put in the glass. And I want something that's good. It needs to be good. I'm not going to sit there and drink something inexpensive. I've got to the Friday night. I am going to celebrate the Friday night thing. It's going to have to be good. It's going to need to engage me a little bit, but I'm not going to feel guilty if I relax and get sucked into the family, the chat, the TV, whatever it might be. So the price has to be in order as well. And I'm going to put forward one of the best value, 18 year old, which is fast becoming a category we cannot afford anymore. 18 year old whiskies that exists, fully natural whiskey. 18-year-old Deanston, 46.3% ABV, fully ex-bourbon maturation with a wee flourish of a finish in first fill bourbon and, once upon a time, my Whiskey of the Year. I think that when I nominated it Whiskey of the Year, it was £70, £75. Pounds. It's now at £80, £85. Pounds. It's gone up a wee bit like everything has. But where a lot of producers, their 18-year-old has broken the triple figure mark, Deanston are keeping a lid on it. And I poured this glass as you were speaking there, and I am pleasantly shocked how delicious this actually is to sip for the money. I love Deanston. I love that it's come of age. I love that it's there. I love its attitude and its pricing. For its core range, special releases, they can be cheeky, but we're just speaking about the 18 tonight, mm -hmm. and I think it's a fabulous dram. That's what I'm putting forward, is my Friday night sipper. Julie. So, um, bang for buck whiskey. So my caveat that I put in before I even speak about this is that I appreciate how lucky I am that I get to go to Campbelltown and get this whiskey. So oh, your Campbelltown joker is being played. So this is my this is my Campbelltown version. So this is the tasting room bottle your own demijohn Springbank. At any given time when I'm in the town, I will pick up a bottle of this. So I have always got at least one in reserve in the cupboard and nine times out of ten there's one sitting about this level on the shelf. They sell it as 2.5 times distilled PBS for plain British spirit because it's sitting in demijohns in the shop. Um, they're always very generous and let you taste it and you get to bottle it. So for all the spring banks that you can't get a hold of, that you you struggle to get, you you know, you, you have to be very lucky to get your hands on. Even if you make the pilgrimage to drive there, you don't yeah, know what's going to be there. To. Yeah. Can I just so, say rub it in, Julie? Rub it in like <laughs> but Jim, I you're think... closer than we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you absolutely are. Um bang for your buck whiskey. This is sixty five quid a bottle. Um, and it gives you everything that's great about spring bag. It varies, it's batchy. Sometimes it's absolutely wonderful and you get home and you open it and try it and think, wish I'd bought five. But <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my Friday night sipper. It's not complicated. It's easy drinking spring bank. This one in particular is 57.6% ABV. Um, that will vary up and down. But yeah, this is my... Um, I do do applaud your use of your joker at this point. I think it's a great pick. 
I think that anybody that's feeling um, a wee bit out of it because they can't, they have you have to physically be there to buy what Julie's just offered. However, the amazing thing about it is, it doesn't matter what time of year you turn up, you will always be able to take home a bottle of that for 55 quid. And it doesn't matter whether you pick up Julie's offering there of the Springbank, the Hazelburn, or the long roll, they've all got their own damage on going on. And all the Cokerin as well. They've got a Cokerin one too. Of course, they've got too. Cokerin too. They're spoiling us. Yeah. I know. Absolutely. Anyway, why am I promoting your pick? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's the winner, clearly. Because <laughs> it's the winner. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, as Jim pointed out there, don't rub it in, Julie. We That's don't get saying. to choose. Um, the lounge gets to choose. And if they're feeling like, well, I love your story, Julie, but I've not touched that story yet. So I need to go with what I know. It's going to be interesting. Um, it's going to be interesting. The poll is live right now. So get in there, get your votes under, uh, uh, or, or uh, get your votes committed to as quickly as you can. And uh, we'll see who the, where the points are going to go this time. If I jump in and say whiskey my wallet, Ben is saying sixty-five pounds a bottle and two hundred quid in fuel. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got a point. Unless you go down there with a pile of pals and you do it with an eco hat on and you split the costs of the 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 fuel and it's a, a lot cheaper. But we, you're absolutely spot on. Sugar Kitty saying that's like three fly swatters compared to a hundred megaton nuclear bomb. Julie, what hashtag Julie wins. <laughs> Jimmy Legg is saying, if I can get there, anyone can. And he has been there, Julie. Uh, uh, Jimmy has been there. Luna is saying, uh, I couldn't decide which one. I gave the point to the person whom I didn't give a point to yet. <laughs> That's the school teacher in you coming out, Luna. Wonderful to have you here. And I think it's as good justification as any. Duder Court is saying, I'll always pick a Deanston. It's my most relied upon whiskey. Every bottle I've bought has been so enjoyable. Good to have the support there, Duder Court. It's good to have you as a barfly too. Welcome in. <laughs> Yuri is saying, I wish to have the opportunity to buy Springbank more often, but in real life, Deanston is a number one to me. Again, that's what I was saying. It's available to them. It's tricky, but I did use a Campbelltown. I did use a Joker tonight. Whiskey Weekend Ram Harrow saying, where can you buy that bottle, Aquavite? Uh, what, which one? The Deanston 18? Uh, Harrow, normally everywhere. Um, if you're talking about Julie's, you have to go to the distillery, unfortunately. Okay. We'll give you 10 more seconds to get your votes in. Um, I, I think this is going to be closer than I imagined. Oh, wow. Please get your votes in. It's, it's flickering backwards and forwards between two. It really is. So we'll give a 10. Will we do it together, Julia? 10 second countdown. 10, 9, 8. I think it's going to be, it's, it's neck and neck. There's nothing in it. Can you see this? Yeah, Jeff, I'm suggesting that it's not us. <laughs> yeah, I, was gonna, I could take the hint. <laughs> yes, I think we can start it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just wait until I'm winning before I kill the poll, okay? Is that okay with you, Julie? <laughs> I can't see okay. it. Fourth place with 11% of the vote is clear. Currently 11% of the vote is Powers John's Lane. Well, hey, I'm not, I think it's a great can I just say that, that as 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 uh, whiskey with Molly said, it's because people haven't tried it. So. Uh, Paris John's Lane, I think that's right, and I think it's definitely a part of this game. Whether you want to put forward something that you feel is a really strong contender and you don't care where you score, or whether you play competitively and you want to put forward a popular pick, let's say, it's definitely going to be part of this game. But I I think. Um, Sorry, on this occasion, I've lost, but it is yeah. it's one of those things that, as you said earlier on, Roy, this is an opportunity to, to give people the, to, to say to people, These are whiskies you should be trying. This is the best opportunity to say to people, These are whiskies you should be trying. And I think I so, and I think I hope that that's the takeaway for everyone that. We're not turning up here to, to do anything other than tell the truth. You know, it, it, Julie, is, it, she, put, put, she put forward a sponge. She works for Decadent Drinks. She put forward a sponge pick. But what's she going to do? Going to try and do it for, you know, the, the look of the thing or tell the absolute truth? If you walk into my house and I want to impress you as a guest, 
I'm pouring this for you because it's knocking me on my backside every time I try it. So the only thing she can do is put that forward. The scores and how she plays the game would be damned. We have yeah. to just pick what we feel is right. Friday night sipper, what are we actually doing when we lob up on the couch? Okay, Julie, I, I'm happy. I'm going to take this. Uh, uh, in third place, 19% of the vote is Glenn Morange's Kentaruban. And in second place, and it was nip and tuck, it was 35 35% for a long time, but 33% for the Springbank bottle your own and the Deanston 18-year-old wins it. But it's just about to lose it again if I wait, if I keep up here for long enough. Springbank is now at 34% against Deanston's 36. But I think we'll end it at that. And it's not just, I'm, I'm happy to leave it for a wee bit longer if you like, Julie. But, but they'll start to play with us. Okay. okay, Deanston wins. You don't get to gloat this one then. If we're I'm not going to gloat. I'm not going to gloat because <laughs> that was very, very, very close. So I'll put in four points and Julie's three points. Good stuff. We've only got one more category to go. One more category. Whiskey Weekend Drama saying, I'm at the shop beginning of May. So choices to pick up. Uh, good to sleep in front of the shop. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of that for cage bottles, but what you need, the tip about the cage bottles, Julie will back me up on this, don't feel like you need to queue up. They randomly put cage bottles in throughout the day. So you can walk in at two in the afternoon and they've just put out a couple, they've, a couple more have become available, so it makes it onto the shelf. Don't sweat, don't sweat it if it, if it is what it is. Gav Strams is saying, I have a bus pass. Good for you, Gav. <laughs> uh, can we just raise a wee glass? Gav's in tonight. He's been really poorly, spent a couple of weeks in the hospital. This is the second V-pub he's made back. Gav, to your health, big guy. Slanchova to you. Wonderful to see you in. Cheers. Daniel Williams is saying this is close. It was Daniel. And that Harrow is saying, ah, the distillery shop. Peter Lee's bought me a dram and said, I'm taking this opportunity to buy each of you a dram. Thanks to Julie for everything she's done for Denise and I. Roy for welcoming us in with open arms. Jim for his utterly brilliant Irish accent. And Jeff for just being cool. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> stuff. Peter Lee, thanks to you, buddy. Thank you very much for your generous dram. Thanks to you and Denise as well for being part of everything that we stand for, buddy. Surprise, there wasn't an SMWS to impress your guest round. Well, there's still another round to go, Ben. Let's see what we have as we ditch the Friday night sipper and go for the last special occasion pour. Now, I think we've all introduced one, right? So I think what we'll do is, Julie, maybe we'll ask you okay. as our esteemed celebrity guest to... How would you define your special occasion pour? How are you going to beat that 18 year old Bamor? <laughs> well, I am. Um, had I had this been a, a year and a half ago, then I would have been being very corporate <laughs> again. So, this is from my last job. This is cool. a bottling from Elixir Distillers. And I have put this in as my special occasion whiskey. I. Prior to leaving the company, we had an allocation, you know, a staff allocation of whiskey and I saved it and I spent it all on two bottles of this whiskey and then I was gifted a bottle of it. So I was really, really fortunate. And if anyone was at the London Whiskey Show in 2022... This is the whiskey that I was directing everybody to spend tokens on because it was just so good. So my and special occasion info. dram. So this is whiskey that I don't drink all the time. It's not a sipper that I sit and enjoy all the time. I drink it on special occasions. And I've still got, I think, I hope I've still got two bottles of it. I think I might, this might be the second one. But this one is the... Single Malts of Scotland, Marriage of Casks, Speyside, 25 years old. <sighs> Unknown Speyside Distillery, genuinely don't know. It was an absolutely so it's a sing this is a single malt. Say again? This is a single malt. It is. It is a single malt. So it was a marriage of, gosh, I can't remember. I've forgotten now. I think it was a marriage of two casks, but it, it's fruity, bourbon, delicious it was 52.6 percent abv and 
it's just, yeah. I finished it just the other night. So it wasn't really that special an occasion, but I just wanted something really nice. So I had the wow. last drama. What's more special than just the other night, right? Well, that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. It was a Tuesday. That's it. <laughs> but, yep. uh, but yeah, that's my special occasion one. So there's still more of this in my house. So this could be my impressure guests. My impressure guests was the bow more. This would be my special occasion. So it just depends when you come to my house. A You'll party at Julie's the rest of the night is after definitely that, but... soon. <laughs> what a night that's going to be! Fantastic. <laughs> Listen, can I just ask you though, uh, uh, what, not what you paid for it, but what's the retail of that? I, I can remember. I can tell you. I looked it up. Oh, did you? Okay. It's a twenty-five-year-old single malt whiskey. We don't know what it is, but it's got Julie's and and so many other folks' uh, excitement. Delightful. It's a hundred and ninety nine pounds. Oh God! I was saying two fifty in my head. Okay, that's brilliant. That's a it's, a, it's a lot of money. One hundred and ninety nine pounds on a bottle of liquid is a hell of a lot of money. But in today, in twenty twenty four, single malt, twenty five year old things that people are raving about for one hundred and ninety nine pounds. I think for you to even mention that in, uh, tonight is 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 a wee tip, a wee nugget, a wee bit of insider yes. insight. I think it's like you can a, get it, get a, it. A, it's good. I recognise the artwork from the label. It's been out for a wee while, that one, Julie. I think I tried it mm -hmm. in Limburg last 20, year. Uh, 22. Yep, I 20, think I tried it in Limburg last, last year. Yeah. Excellent whiskey for the money, as long as you can go over the fact you don't know where it's from, right? Yeah. Fantastic. I think, yeah, if it's if you can just appreciate it for what it is, it's just gorgeously fruity and, yeah, it's lovely. Superb, superb. Jeff. Come on, my son, it's your last effort tonight, your last yeah. pitch, your last time up at the podium. Last attempt to get points on the board. Yes. What's, um, what's... Well, we've had a lot of fun, haven't we, this evening? And in truth, we're all winners, no matter what happens. But please, I ask you, come closer and let me tell you the story. December last year, my birthday's on Christmas Eve. And rolls on Christmas Day. I've got a two-year-old in the house. It's the best day ever for her. We've got decorations. And it's our first time as a family, as our own little unit, we spent the whole day together. And I think we can all agree that's pretty special. So as I just rolled over my 31st birthday, my special occasion pour that I've been sipping all night. And can I just say, that's good. Oh. Sorry, um, yes, uh, th so I just turned 31, so my special pour is serious, 31-year-old North Star. It is a blended malt scotch whiskey, non-chill filtered, cash strength, distilled in 1988, before I was even a glint in my father's eyes, bottled in 2019, and it is just amazing. Word on the street is it's predominantly Klein Leash. And those waxy oranges that I've been sipping all night truly is special. So even if I don't win, it's a special occasion. So I've got my special pour for that. Wow. Wow. I think I'm totally distracted by the fact that you're only 31 years old. <laughs> yeah, I look a lot more haggard, don't I? That's why I wear the shades. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, blended malt whiskey, cast strength, uh, almost all, I believe it to be exclusively bourbon cask, right, as well. Yeah. Um, and I remember when that came out, Jeff, it was 100 quid. I think you can still occasionally pick it up here and there for 120, something like that. For We need to remember it's cast strength, a 31-year-old malt whiskey. And just to add a little extra tickle to my presentation i paid under 50 pounds for this bottle see that's cheap you're never you're <laughs> never short of turning up a bargain are you that's incredible 50 quid for 30 31 year old malt whiskey sometimes whiskey is undersold jeff <laughs> yes can you beat that jim can you beat that mr novice <sighs> I'm going to look to Jimmy Leg, who's worth three, 3 million votes on Loam. 
Here comes the Joker. Here comes the Joker. Bring bank 18 year old. Woo! Uh, <laughs> not alone. I mean, the thing about it is, can I tell you something about this ball? I actually, if you can't, unless you zoom in, there's a bottle of Springbank 18 year old behind my shoulder here, and there's very little left in it. That's for a special occasion, which is coming soon. Mm. This bottle hasn't been opened yet. This was gifted to me. Uh, just to tug on the heartstrings. <laughs> very special gift. Uh, by a gentleman we all know. I'm not going to name him, but as it, it, we all know him, and it rhymes with um, Fru from uh, Freezy, shall we say, uh, <laughs> Uh, who gifted this ball to me, and I could not believe when he gifted this ball to me. And it actually is imported into the Pacific uh, side of America. So this is an American ball of... Um, 750 mil? Ye well, uh, uh, yes, correct. So there's an extra two, two drams in there. There's an extra yeah, one two for me, Jim, and one for you. <laughs> But the thing about it is, I have, as I said, I, I did say I've got a bottle of uh, Springbank 18 above my shoulder. Springbank 18 is, to me, the one that I haven't had, and I haven't had a feel like that since the... Every time I drink Springbank 18, and it's Springbank 18... I'm bypassing 12-year-old. I'm bypassing 15-year-old because I still haven't had one of them that, that has just nailed it for me. But the Springbank 18 is the one that reminds me of every time I try Springbank for the first time. Yeah. And it was a 10-year-old, obviously. And, uh, well, I'm saying obviously, but to me it was, it was, it was the 10-year-old. It's just got something about it that... that to me, is is guttural. It's it's whiskey at its effing best. There's no, there's nothing touches whiskey at its best like Springbank when they get it right. And I just there's a very good reason that Campbelltown is a cul-de-sac. Yeah, <laughs> we it all end me, up. It in makes that me cry. I I genuinely I'm not. Lion, when I say it, that this stuff makes me cry. Like, it, uh, my wife wonders what's going wrong with me. <laughs> uh, you know that that we I know, cry Jim. whenever I drink this stuff. There, right? Your two minutes are up, son. <laughs> are you going to? Are you? Is I'm not going to bully you. Nobody's going to bully you. Is that a bottle to open tonight, or save for uh, that special? This one? this isn't uh -huh. going to open tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no fair enough fair <laughs> enough right hey who it's me then isn't it of course it's me the, the last one of the night last one of the night they I, I wish i had something amazing to finish with and i have when this came out i got to taste it in its first few weeks of being released and immediately I declared it to be one of the best whiskies I had ever tasted in my life. And then I found out the price for it and realized I would never buy a bottle of it. And yet here I am, maybe just six or seven years later, happily buying a bottle of it. Why is that? Have I been tenderized? Am I accepting the fact that I'm just going to throw money at whiskey? No, it's a weird thing that's happened with this bottle, which has meant it's fallen off the radar for a lot of people. What's happened is that this whiskey stayed at that price and everything else caught up with it. And it is still as fantastic as the day it first came out. This latest bottle I've got, I struggle. I have to hide it from myself. I have to bury it at the back. I have to put... As Vin would say, guard whiskies in front of it to f almost to f forget that it's there. It is so good. It's a bit pricey, but compared to its peers now that have all caught up with it and exceeded it, it is doing fantastic things right now. I think you'll all be surprised. This is Craig Elliche's 17 year old, 46% ABV. 
like I say, when this came out, it was just far too expensive. And now everything else is more expensive than it. If you sip this right now, you taste things that are much, much older to me than 17 years old. Overaging doesn't happen these days because the, the older casks are so precious that, that do, they tend not to use them to lift that core range age statement. But I suspect that Dewar's are still doing it in this 17-year-old. You could put this in front of somebody and tell them you've given them a 25. I kid you not, it passes for it. It is so good. It's been on the VPUB recently. I am so loving it. You can see I'm halfway down. Normally all the bottles are things that I share and I happily pour for other people. This is very, very self-indulgent. This Kriegelichy 17 is one of the best 100 quid bottles of whiskey out there in existence today. I rest my case at that. Ooh, Cheers, the poll is now live. <laughs> You can say it after the poll has closed <laughs> because it sounds like it's going to be a negative. Excess to Scotch is saying Aquavite, 90 euro in the Netherlands. Wow. Hell's Red is saying, ooh, Fabdram, paid 85 pounds for our last one. Love it, love it, love it, lol. I think Helen's talking about um, maybe the Kriegelichy. She's, she's directing that to me. So, uh, Exovri, Exovri, I'm so sorry, you're a barfly and I can't I can't pronounce your name, Exovri. Let's go with that. Slightly off topic, but I would love to know roughly roughly how many bottles you all have in your collection at any one time. I know you're all anomalies and the number will most likely be high. I would disagree a wee bit with you. I think a, a lot of the people that are in this chat tonight tend to have over accumulation of whiskey because it's all about flavor and exploration rather than drinking, right? So we tend to have a lot of bottles just accumulate on the shelf. <laughs> and our superhero, Wook, <laughs> comes in once more. He's doubling up. I don't know what to say. Are, are, you, are you here just to... I don't know. It's super, super generous. And I know that for, for everyone, it's. I, I, I'm, I feel privileged to have a dram bot for me by anyone that joins me on a VPUB. But Wook, it's... um. You're doing things on a scale that we've never experienced before, buddy. Certainly not in whis the whiskey sphere. Um, eh, and I'm very grateful to have you here. Eh, look, my friend, you've just replaced my Craig Alecky 17. Slant you to you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Hell's Wedding St. Craig Alecky. All day long for me. Excess to Scotch. Love the game. But no peated whiskies. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> it's fair enough. There's not been a lot of peat tonight, apart from the Springbanks, maybe. Uh, Wook is making the rest of us look bad. Not, not at all, Rick Johnson. It does not matter. It does not matter at all. Jimmy Legacy, and I'll be asking for that one next time. I'm at your house just for spite. You can have anything. Last time you were here, you could have had anything. The same goes the next time. And Alice saying, Roy, I've recently got my hands on a Craig Alec 17, but yet to open it. will be an Easter Sunday dram. Now, please let me know what you think about it, Al. And Peter is saying, what? A heavily underpeated V pub this is, says Pete Head. Boo, boo, boo. We need to try harder for you, Pete Head. It's interesting though, isn't it? Are we playing it as a game and choosing not to go with Pete? I don't know. I don't think it was intentional. I suspect that if we do play this going forward and we use my categories, they would maybe be a bit more conducive to picking PT whiskies. Who knows? And Stephen. Stephen Toth is saying, is Wook Ralphie? Like I say, the conspiracy theories have been absolutely <laughs> rife on the identity of our friend Wook. Darth Kermit has bought me a dram as well. Thank you so much, Darth Kermit. Thank you, Robin, for coming in and hanging out with us tonight. He's saying, SMWS tasting tonight, replay beckons. Uh, well, you'll be sitting this, watching this on the replay. You can play along, of course. You try and pick what the winner will be in advance and give yourself points based on that. And another drama from Jimmy Legg saying, it hurts me to say this, obviously, but Wook is spending his money on quality that is always, and that is always a wise policy. So for Wook even to have an endorsement from Jimmy Legg says a lot. Uh, I think we need to make him a wee mystery emoji. Cheers, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Cheers, Robin. And cheers, Wook. Right, you have 10 seconds left to vote on the final pick of the 
night. Wow. Wow. Get your votes in. I think the die has been cast. I think we know what it's going to be. Really interesting how the Jokers have been played tonight. Uh, Pete, if you ever come back for a second round, you might discover that it seems like Springbank is a pretty... I mean, having said that, I mean, uh, Julie's Springbank was beaten out just by a nudge. Um, I think my Springbank won and... It looks like uh, Jim's Springbank Joker is going to take the plaudits tonight. Okay, 10 seconds to go, as I say, and then it's all over. We've just got one wee twist, and then we move into the, the quiz at the end. I'm keeping you up late. Are you okay for it? It's gone much later than I expected. I mean, that's that's really strange for the VPUB, right? It doesn't normally happen. <laughs> good idea on the emoji, Roy. It wasn't my idea, Greg, but I think it is indeed a good idea. Okay, I'm killing this. Now I'm going to take it in fourth place. It's quite close elsewhere. Uh, we've got the Single Malts of Scotland Speyside 25-year-old with 11% of the vote. Uh, Julie, I just think not enough people have tried it, maybe. They don't realise how good that wee drama is. Trust how me, good the value it's not good. In third place with 26% of the vote is my call for the Craig Elliche 17, only picking up two points for that one. And in third place... Uh, our emotional story, uh, our, <laughs> our story of maturity and fantastic value, 28% of the vote, North Star, serious, picks up three points, which means our winner is Whiskey Novice Jim. You know that much of a novice, are you? Saving the best till last, 35% of the vote, pulling it out with a spring bank 18 and four points. End poll. Now we move in to a one more poll. One more poll that nobody's accepting, but I'm just going to ask you all. You can vote on this too, if you can. I'm asking, should value be a consideration for points? So I'm adding in another layer here, four, three, two, one, based on how much money it would cost us to go out and buy our five bottles that we nominated. But rather than me just force that and say this is part of it, I'm really just going to ask the community, should value weave into this whole thing? When we pick our whiskies, when we recommend our whiskies to the community, should we be mindful of what they cost, because there's a huge argument, Julie, isn't there, going backwards and forwards. The whiskey should be judged on the whiskey, not on somebody's means to buy that whiskey. Whereas other people, and I think certainly in this environment, I often, because I don't have the means to just buy any whiskey I want, I have to, it has to be an absolute factor, and there are certain whiskeys that I'm desperately keen to have, but I back away from just because I don't feel that they bring value. So rather than me make a decision, I just throw it out to the community and they decide. I went out to all the online whiskey places to try and see how much it would cost me to buy all of these uh, wee collections. <laughs> I did not do that. I hope that you see from the whiskies I picked tonight, I didn't pick my whiskies based on being cheap. If you do that, you run the risk of getting no points as you play the game. So you have to strike the balance. You have to work out what you're going to go for. Cheap or good? Finding the balance is critical to everything that we do in the VPUB, everything that you do on Whiskey Novice Channel everything that you do on Jeff's Whiskey, Jeff. And Julie, when you're speaking to people over a table and a tasting at the Glasgow Whiskey Club, you're just trying to find where the good stuff lies. Mark Winter is saying, is grain whiskey matured in cheaper warehouses? <laughs> eh, not always, but yes, generally speaking. And it's often in 
a significantly well used oak. It just needs to get to three years an oak. It doesn't matter what condition that oak is in. But that's a very broad brush, uh, difficult statement to say, but as a general rule of thumb, yes, the, there's a reason why green whiskey needs to get to a certain age before it becomes really quite splendid. Pete Head is saying value importance depends on the category. It does. It does depend on the category a wee bit. Uh, Frank, I, I, I I definitely agree with that. Andrew Butler is saying, is this you telling me not to share my £1,000 bottles again? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. I think it's dependent on everybody's own use case. How do they see these bottles? How do they feel about them? Do they get pleasure out of sharing them, regardless of what the, the price that it cost was? Anyway... Jeff, the value whiskey supports this message of value. Well, I can tell you that 74% of the community think that value is important for points. I'm surprised that as many as 26% say no. But I think we have to go with it. Do we have to go with it? Yeah. So that means that... I'm not going to tell you what your points are right now. I'm going to add them up based on value score being added in. So the best value would get four points and the most expensive pick would get a single point. You would still get a point from it. Is that okay and clear to everyone? Are we okay with that? So is, but is it best value or is it cheapest? Yes. It is actually, truth be told, the cheapest. It is. Yeah. However, the reason I'll argue value is that nobody's putting forward whiskies tonight based on it being cheap. Even your white Mackay that you put forward tonight, Julie, you did not argue this the case for that bottle because it was a cheap whiskey. You argued the case that it was good value. Mm -hmm. So the, the value is intrinsic. Are we okay with it? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. If you want, after, when we, in the green room afterwards, I'll tell you what the scores were before and after, but you can probably work it out. Okay. Julie's price for her five bottle selection tonight was 680 quid. It's not bad. Roy's price for his collection tonight, speaking about myself in the third person, was 340 quid. Jim's price for his five bottles tonight undercuts me. 335 quid, Jim. Novice. Amazing. Jeff's price tonight, 305 pounds. <laughs> I appreciate that's very difficult to see. I want it. I wanted it to be over people, but it's just... So, Jeff, if you hold something dark up and wave it about the screen, I don't know what you would do, or just your <laughs> hands or something. £305. Jeff, four points. Which I think, Jeff, is your first four points of the night. All right. <laughs> so it shows you the balance, right? Uh, uh, myself, I only get two points. Jim gets three points. Julie still picks up a point. I'm going to add up the scores here and uh, um, I think I'm going to have to work up a wee graphic or something to show it. Would that be okay? And also, I don't know how quick I'm going to add this up. Jim, any bottles offered tonight that you might consider actually going out and picking up? From anybody else, you mean? Yeah, from us, yeah. I, I actually, I have... I, I would nearly guess every ball that you have almost apart from Julie because it's all stuff that I can't afford uh, you know it, 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 and I don't know I'm joking about that Julie but I mean the likes of the uh, the Bemore, right. yeah, yeah, it's not a case of I, I don't I just don't spend that sort of money on, on bottles of whiskey it's, I, I don't doubt for one second that that, that Bamor is incredible, but I just don't spend that sort of money. Um, there's nothing there that I haven't already thought about. That uh, So it's all the good whiskeys out there. We know it's all out there. And we're the people that are telling people it's out there. 
We just require people to listen to us. And the thing, and that sounds maybe a bit ignorant, saying, you know, listen to us, tell that we'll tell you what's good. Um, it's all incredibly, and this was a brilliant uh, way of saying it, that it's subjective, how subjective whiskey is, that uh, there's four of us supplying uh five different choices each and not one of us crossed over and that was I didn't, us. I didn't even need to tease out any duplication tonight before we yeah. before we went live so you know that and i would guarantee you you could pick four other people within the whiskey community and the whiskey community is 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 a strange we're a strange people in that we're very very uh we we we're very precious about this thing that we have. That whiskey's a a beautiful thing to us. We we have all been to the distilleries. We've all done the distillery tours. We've all been there and and said this is how this is how we want our whiskey to be. Just within this week, I've I've been to a new distillery in Belfast that's just opening next week, and. Um, we're sort of looking at it in, in the scheme of things and saying, well, look, we should do this, we should do that, etc. Whiskey's whiskey. It's a beautiful thing. Malt's malt, grain's grain. Doesn't matter who's making it in the world. If you're if you're a flavour chaser, if you're in it for the flavour, it doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter how. Um, that's okay. It's, to some people, the malt's where it's at, I understand. But I think as long as we keep on that kind of message we will be abused malt will become premiumized and i think that would be a shame because all whiskey is is teaching us that it can be fantastic any surprises tonight julie um no i don't think so it's so, funny that isn't it it's what jim said so. struggling uh -huh. no because we, we we've we work out as a community where yeah. the good stuff is and if four of us get together in this space or in a room together pulling out yeah. the whiskies we're all just going to be kind of happily nodding like yeah, those yeah. wee dogs that used to sit in the back the parcel shelf of a car right <laughs> it's, yeah yeah it's, it's good jeff any any takeaway i've got one takeaway from tonight i want to share but jeff um well every whiskey is fantastic that's been recommended obviously i've not tried them all like i am well known to be the tightest with my money the cheapest of cheap but like, it was, yeah, like Deanston 18, that is phenomenal whiskey. That's a bottle I truly miss and will replace when it goes down on some offer that I can find. Um, Powers John Lane, lovely whiskey. And I will probably will buy a bottle of that because I've got the old branding version, which is yep. so much better. So I don't want to open that one. I'll buy another one to drink. And it yep. just shows like, I know I've gone more for the cheaper route. That's that's my jam. I know that, but it shows how no matter the price point, there's great whiskey in every category. Yep. Well, let's let's share how we scored tonight. But let's for, let's remember that these scores actually mean nothing. This is the gamification of it. What we've managed to do tonight as a wee collective of just four people is get together and share. 20 cracking whiskies that if people happen a across and they can apply their own idea of value and all of that stuff to it I, we, they know it comes with our genuine heartfelt recommendation that we found genuine pleasure in all of these whiskies and that's what unites all of these things my takeaway from tonight julie is the point you made about that spring bank despite it not winning tonight that spring bank it doesn't matter if you make that pilgrimage, and there are few distilleries in Scotland you can say this about, if you make the pilgrimage to Springbank, you're guaranteed to come home with something sublime. Okay. That somebody that's been in whiskey as long as Julie Hamilton has, she's got five picks and she'll she'll crowbar it in to that lineup to show people how much she's enjoying it. People forget how good those demijohns are for 55 quid. Make the pilgrimage. Go and see the place. Not everywhere will treat you well. Not everywhere will charge you fairly. Look at the Port Ellen prices that's just come out. 200 quid for the starting tour. What game are you playing? 
It's not a game I recognise and it's not a game I'm willing to participate in. I much prefer the game that we've played tonight. Al's bought us a wee dram right at the end saying, good fun tonight, Roy. Thanks to the three J's. Brilliant, Jeff, Julie and Jim. Okay, let's see what the scores are. Thank you for your very generous dram, Al. That poll is still running. I better kill that, get rid of that. I can tell you that the scores are coming in at fourth place. Nobody goes home with any, without any points tonight. With the value points added in, Julie, on 11 points. You can just about see that wee number there. Thank you for your participation, Julie. Superb stuff. And third place tonight on 15 points is the Whiskey Novice, Jim. Third place, still a decent score. Between you, my pal, Jeff, and I. I take the plaudits tonight, big guy. But by the narrowest of margins, by only two points, by only two, and there are lots of things that could be said about it, but what I want to remind everyone of, I was very close to the end when it came to value. You managed to put 16 points together by spending by far the least amount of money and not a single recommendation from you, Jeff, was left of perfect. I'll take I'll take that. I'll take my value points and run. Superb. <laughs> superb. To everyone, thank you for your trust. Thank you for your participation. And more than anything, thank you for your recommendations. Thank you. Cheers. I can't wait to get to Julie's house. <laughs> <laughs> Fix. There it is. Is Fix. it all banned <laughs> now? After oh. that. <laughs> what was that? You're all banned now after that. <laughs> <laughs> 11 points. Okay. We'll get a brand new cocktail made with White and Mackay called <laughs> Sour Grapes. <laughs> get it round you. Can you get the you points now. without the value? Uh, oh, points without the value. Would you like them? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. She's Julie, you're strong. Like that's <laughs> I, I was quite happy just to leave losing. I didn't care. It, it doesn't actually change the position. It doesn't change much. a thing. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, Julie, you're on 10. Um, but Jim and Jeff would be tied on 12 points each if we didn't weave the value. You're still in. winning. And I'm still winning with 16 points. See, I'm no I'm not a popular winner. I suspect if I take this game home uh, forward, sorry, I should. I, I maybe have to just going to host it and have other participants in, and I don't get to play along. Or just challenge me. Just try and beat me. Next time, I won't go for expensive stuff. Well, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's it's like you. I, I've already explained. You went with your heartfelt. What is knocking you on your backside? Julie, you've been in whiskey longer than most of us. And the stuff that you're sipping, because of what you do, the evangelism that you do, the club, the festival, spoiled. the tastings, the whole, the stuff that you're able to taste, whiskey has to work hard to get your attention, I think. So I would suggest that there's also a lot of weight behind the stuff that you recommend too. Um, I, for Julie Hamilton to say this is great, I think it has to be quite remarkable. Maybe not Just always the best, maybe something Brody's. different, something unique, something that stands out. The Glen Wivis, great example. Not expensive, 55, 60 quid. The Indry, 40 quid, maybe a bit more expensive now, but you connected with it because you could, you knew that it was something a wee bit different. Anyway, we roll into the quiz at the end. It's a very long VPUB tonight. Thank you to everybody that's been hanging out till the end. You all hang on like troopers to work out how the score was going to work out. There is a, a quiz at the end. If some of you want to dip out now and pick up the quiz on the replay, there is nothing you have to do live in order to stay here and play it. It will be there for you on the replay. Thank you for your time here. And what those of you that do decide to stay, you're going to be treated to a quiz at the end that will finish on an ass hat like it always does. But there will be a cookie trail crumb of a clue in every single question I share with you tonight that will help you answer the ass hat. I suggest, however, you just treat it like a normal VPUB quiz at the end and enjoy it. Is everyone ready? 
this Jim's scrambling just about to empty. He's having a wee nap. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm making up my um, notes. ABCDs. Oh, I have you, have you got your wee ABCDs? I've got some lying about here somewhere. I think so. We need an ABCD. Just a tear a piece of paper or put a big sharpie. I'm, I meant to remind you to do this. Thank you, everyone. Uh, whiskey whiz, it's my ball and I'm going home, says says Ben Whiskey with Molly. And Alice saying, what, Jeff Whiskey should now be called Jeff Jack and Ori Whiskey. He was brilliant tonight, wasn't he, Al? Jimmy Like is saying, I'm happy that you won. No, I can't even type that sentence without laughing. <laughs> but thank you, Jimmy. Thank you very much for, for getting over the laughter in order to put a sentence together. Andrew Butler is saying, I wonder how many of your points depend on things that you have talked about for hours and hours on previous VPUBs. There is no doubt that I could be influencing things. But remember, Andrew, I chose last. So if all my participants wanted to step up and say, oh, this is one of Roy's favourites and pick it, I was not allowed to pick it. That was the disadvantage that I'm at. Anyway, Whiskey with Molly saying, I won't help based on the patron lock-in. It won't help. You're right. Don't get too... Uh, distracted by the cookie trail thing v pub quiz at the end good luck everyone thanks for staying with me until this point question one which of these distilleries have a legitimate connection with or a seal of approval from the british royal family a glenuri b loch nagar or c brackla which of those distilleries have or have had a legitimate connection with or a seal of approval from the British royal family. Dancing Arab is in. Good to see you. He's in quite the week. Two from two after Tuesday. Super stuff. Good to welcome you in here. Thanks for staying at the end of the quiz. Is it a Star Wars quiz, hence the background? Well, the background, does it look Star Warsy? I, I was going for a game show. <laughs> it does look a wee bit Star Warsy, doesn't it? Okay, guys, after three, two, one, what do we have? Julie's on a C and a C for Jeff and a C, Brackla, being Royal Brackla. I can tell you you're absolutely safe tonight, Glenuri, Royal. Royal Loch Nagar, Royal Brackla, all had those names yeah, for very yes. real reasons. It might not been a royal seal or a royal warrant, but it did have a legitimate connection in the in the case of Glenuri Royal, for example. Okay, question two. Which of these Isla distilleries is the oldest? A, Bunahaven. B. Ardbeg, C. Kalila. Which of these Isla distilleries is the oldest? Shit, that's a good one. Was that a wee swear word from the novice? Sorry, Apo apologies. No, it's okay. Adds a wee bit of tension to things. That was like when you get told off by the teacher, that was. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a bloody good question. Okay, which of these island distilleries is the oldest? A, Burahavan, B, Ardbeg, C, Kalila. Give me your answers, please, after three, two, one, go. Ardbeg from Jeff, Ardbeg from Julie, and Ardbeg from Jim. Oh, my goodness, this early in the quiz, and you're all doing absolutely superb. 18-15. 1881 for Bunahaven, 1846 for Kalila. Ardbeg is definitely the oldest of the three. Question three. Which of these brands has a connection with the smuggler, Captain William McCoy or this Captain reminds. William Bill McCoy? <laughs> Which one of these brands has a connection with William McCoy, the smuggler? A, Highland Park. B, Cutty Sark. Settle down, Jeff. <laughs> C, Edwardale. <laughs> He's, he's excited. I'll <laughs> tell this story I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these brands has a connection with the smuggler, Captain William Bill McCoy? A, Highland Park, B, Cutty Sark, or C, Edder Dower? The lounge are feeling very confident tonight. They're in full song, as they always are. 
250 of them still in as well. I love you. You're beautiful people. Over 400 of you in at the peak tonight as well. I love the support. Thank you all so much. Okay, three, two, one. B, B, B. Everyone thinks Cutty Sark. Highland Park did have a smuggler in the shape of Marcus. Magnus, sorry, Yunsen. Edradour had connections with the Mafia during Prohibition, which is what linked up Captain William Bill McCoy and Cutty Sark, the people that wanted the real McCoy. Hence, and I can't believe it never appeared tonight, it was actually in the offing for me. This could have been so many categories, this 50% Cutty Sark Prohibition. I'm now, there's a third of the bottle left in that there, I think, by the weight of it. Getting through it. It's a great mixer, great sipper, great, just a great whiskey. 26 quid. Unbelievable. Question four. Which of these distilleries have, sorry, which of these distilleries has an operational malting floor? A, Glengarry, B, Ardnamurchan, or C, Kilhoman? Which of those distilleries has an operational malting floor? I'm going back and sipping all the whiskies I recommended today. Everything about, apart from that wild turkey, because I, I rinsed it clearly. <laughs> and they're all just wonderful, wonderful, tasty drinks. I was at the but pricier end, I'll admit. More at 18. We're all desperate for a wee shot of it, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> right. Three, two, one. CCC. See them buses. I can tell you that Glen Geary has an operational malting floor. Ardnamurchan has a malting floor, but it's not operational. And Colhoman has an operational malting floor. Full house for everyone in attendance tonight. Question five. There's always an image. We've got some railway tracks. We've got a very prominent pagoda. Very typical brickwork there. Some whitewashing going on. Quite a mishmash thing going on. I'm obviously going to just ask you, where are we? Are we A, in the lowlands? Are we B, B, in the highlands? Or are we C, in Speyside? It gets trickier from here on in. It always does. Feel uncomfortable for the first section of the, the first half of the VPUB quiz at the end. It's going to get trickier from here on in. Each of these questions is a clue towards the final asset. Lachlan McKenzie on four out of four, along with Ben Demon Hunter and Stewie Baby. Good to see you all in. The one Glassman Warner saying he's been there. He's got this. Follow him then. Simone is on four out of four, along with Jason Cooper. Maybe the first name, the first time I've welcomed you, Jason. You're a barfly. Good to have you. Andrew Hamaker on four. Chris Barlow, Don't Pass Whiskey. Rick Johnson, Whiskey with Molly, Hell's Wood, Molasses. Lots of people on four. Okay, guys, no, I, I don't know if you're maybe guessing this one. Where do you think we are? A, the Lowlands, B, Highlands, C, Speyside. Three, two, one. Speyside, Speyside, Speyside. All of you think Speyside. There is a banana skin there. I think you have selected Speyside for which reason? It's the most distilleries I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the, the railway, the railway. You're right, Julie, and yet wrong. This is Ardmore. So close to being a space side, but it's a Highlander. It has the railway line running right alongside next to it. Banana skin there for that reason. I knew that that railway line in the picture, it's a Wikipedia image, would potentially trip people up. It got all of you at the same time there. Strap in. I don't think it's going to get much easier. Question six. Which of these is the highest official ABV release from Isle of Arran's Lochranza distillery? And, incidentally, the most inexpensive too. 
So which of these is the highest ABV and the cheapest? A. Their Sherry Bodega cask. B. Their Bothy Quarter cask. Or C. Their Signature Series Edition 1 Remnant Renegade. Oh, it looks like question five. The picture slipped a few people up. Oh, wow. Martin Fielder is saying railroad steered me wrong. I tried to help with the banana skin. Yeah. Shame. Okay, I imagine there's some guesswork going on with this one as well, guys, unless you've got these on the shelf. Jeff's nodding. Okay. After three, two... One, A, Sherry Bariga, B, Bothy, C, Signature, B, 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 and they come right back in strong. Superb, superb. Aaron's highest ABV and cheapest product from that selection, at least, is indeed their quarter cask. Tremendous wee bottle of whiskey, tremendous value for money. As is the Sherry Bodega. The Sherry is still about 55%, whereas the quarter cask is up uh, 57 odds, I think, 58. Question seven. By the way, it's not all about the how much alcohol you get for the price, but it has <laughs> got so much to do with how much of the original product they're preserving. So, Question seven. Which of these mega brands features a product with two detached stags antlers on the label? Which of these mega brands features a product with two detached stags antlers on the label? A, Jim Beam, B, Jack Daniels, or C, Glenfiddich? All I'll say to everyone in the lounge and my three pals in here tonight that participate, although they might not be pals after we finish the VPO tonight. <laughs> Um, after, we have to just slowly read the question. Ben, Whiskey with Molly, saying, doesn't change the answer, but wasn't uh, that picture Aberfeldy? Uh, I'm going to go back to show Ben the big sign on the side. Unless Aberfeldy are in stealth mode or something. Or that could be photoshopped, I suppose, but uh, that's the picture I took from the Ardmore uh, Wikipedia page. As a dyslexic, I don't see what the problem is, Roy. <laughs> yeah, it's right, Ardmore <laughs> Aberfeldy. And also, to be fair to Ben, Whiskey with Molly, um, a lot of the Aberfeldy buildings have that stone and the red woodwork frames and the red doors and things, so I get it. I really do. You saying, ah, lol. Okay. Three... Two, one, guys. Jim Beam, Jim Beam, Glenfiddich. Oh, but Julie Disney looked confident. I can tell you it is Jim Beam. Aww. This is not whiskey. This is a red stag. This one is a dark cherry flavoured liqueur thing, but the red stag has these kind of detached antlers. Julie, you're absolutely right. There are antlers on Glenfiddich, but they are not detached. They're very much still on a deer's head. Um, and Jack Daniels, as far as I'm aware, does not feature antlers anywhere. Jim Beam A, if you answered A, it's the right one. Question eight. In 1991, witnessing the success of Diageo, or DCL as they were known back then, the classic malt series, Allied also released their own series, and they called it the Caledonian Malts. Which distilleries were featured amongst others? A, they featured Glendronic, Milton Duff and Tormor. B, Glencadam, Altmore and Pulteney. Or C, Glengoyne, Lefroig and Scapa. The Caledonian malts, unfortunately, it's something that they didn't keep going. But when they saw the success of Diageo's or DCL's classic malts, 
Allied decide to, to get in on the act. Allied are no more. It's split up amongst various distillery owners now. Um, but what was part of that Caledonian malts of the 1990s? Glendronic, Milton Duff and Turmore, Glencairn, Maltmore and Pulteney, Glengoyne, Lefroy, and Scapa. I have tried to help a wee bit here. And I'm not going to make any friends by... Um, drawn attention to the fact that the last two, nine and ten tonight, are both asshats. Should I just no come at the club next week, Julie? Yeah, just think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. When I'm planning these things, they seem reasonable <laughs> when it plays out. Do your best, folks. Do your best. Michael McKenzie saying B, but a complete guess. Okay, which of these were Caledonian malts? Three, two, one. B, A, Jim, B. Well done, Julie. Well done. Uh, Altmore was in there. Uh, Altmore is now a Dewar's brand. Uh, back then, it would have been DCL. Uh, Glen Goyne is in there. Um, now it's Ian McLeod. Back then, it would have been Edrington. It would have been under the same umbrella as McAllen. Um, so, yes, Glendronic, Milton Duff, hopefully by a process elimination. Some people managed that to work out. Um, amongst others, those three were in the Caledonian malts of the 1990s. Question nine is a bit of an asshat. Which of these distilleries was famously one of the first to be run by a woman? A, the first distillery to be owned by the Walker family, as in Johnny Walker. B, the oldest distillery that's still in operation on Isla. Or C, it was the furthest north mainland distillery up until 2013. So which of these distilleries was famously one of the first to be run by a woman? The first distillery to be owned by Johnny Walker, B, the oldest distillery still in operation on Isla, or C, the furthest north mainland distillery until 2013? Oh, one of the first, yeah, one of the first. Potentially the first, but uh, there are, anyway, well, that's open to interpretation. Jimmy? Julie's confident. I, I see a wee confident twinkle. Okay, after three, two, one, which was one of the first distilleries to be famously operated and run by a woman. We've got Julie on A, uh, crap. Jeff on A, <laughs> and Jim on C. Hi. Right. Jeff and Julie take it. That is Cardew Distillery. Um, Bessie Williamson, of course, famously um, in charge of Lefroy, gone Isla for a long time. Uh, Old Pulteney, no female management as far as I'm aware, but that's what I was trying to lead you towards there. But we're obviously talking about Cardew or Cardo, it was known back in the day. All right, second from last. How are you doing, guys? Julie, you're in good shape. You've only slept up once. Twice. Twice. Jeff? I've slipped up twice. Je Jim? Oh, at least three times. Three times? At least. So that's what you're competing against, guys. And can we just concede just how utterly knowledgeable the lounge always is? It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. And I think that's why the quizzes were getting hard for a long time. I'm not suggesting this is an easy quiz tonight. But because of how good they are and how knowledgeable they are anyway it's the final ass hat at the end so every single question i've given you was a clue to this question 10 which distillery is located closest to the long lost distillery that was known as isla distillery which distillery was lo lo located located closest to isla distillery obviously long demolished. It is a Kildalton distillery. So it's the Kildalton distillery A that's still under construction. It's the Kildalton distillery that's B with a malting floor in operation 
or C, it's the Kildalton Distillery with three visible pagoda ventilators. So there was a distillery once upon a time called Isla Distillery. It's long demolished. But I'm asking you, which of those three distilleries was located closest to that site? A, the Kildalton Distillery still under construction. B, the Kildalton Distillery with a molten floor still in operation. Or C, the Kildalton Distillery with three visible pagoda ventilators. I should apologise to any ELAC that are in or watching or whatever, I kind of don't know if I'm referring to that part of Isla as the Coldalton coast accurately, but it's kind of how I would think about it, the south coast of Isla. Would that be right, Julie, or you don't know either? I know. Jimmy Legacy and Ventilators. I love the way you say that, Aquavita. You sounded just like Sean Connery. I think it's the time of <laughs> night, Jimmy, rather than the accent. Rick Johnson saying if I'm going down I'm going down with the crowd A Okay Everyone 3 2 1 B B Julie C Okay Surely Port Ellen has just come to life Surely Port Ellen has absolutely come to life Yes I can tell you that Isla Distillery was also called Kildalton and Arden Steel, which was right next door to Lefroig, which is the only Kildalton distillery with a molten floor in operation. Yeast. So, all of the clues I gave you tonight were about Lefroig. The Royal Connection, which is Prince Charles' seal. 1815 Foundation, the same as our beg. Prohibition Smuggler, what was the whiskey that was prescribed during Prohibition? Mm -hmm. um, the Malting Floor. Uh, Ardmore Image, the sibling distillery that is Ardmore. Quarter Cask, Lefroy Quarter Cask, Aaron Quarter Cask. Uh, Jim Beam, obviously it's a Beam Santori distillery. Caledonian Malts, Lefroy was one of the Caledonian Malts and run by a woman, obviously, Bessie Williams, used once ran Lefroig. So that was me trying to, but it does require your brain to be in two different places at the same time. Uh, I, I know, trying to pick up the clues as you go towards the end. Julie, you still did really, really well. I've lost the sound. Seven of ten? I'll go out and come back in. Oh, she's lost. I think Julie's got a seven out of ten tonight. Jeff, were you keeping score? Yeah, I think I got eight. But that sounds far too good to be right. Eight out of ten. And Jim? I think so. I, I, I would agree with Jeff. That it was around right eight. Ish. <laughs> and and right weirdly, right about... my, my, my next week's my review of, and this isn't me blagging my review of next week, is Lefroy Lore. And I was actually digging into Lefroig, and there was an awful lot of what you were saying, and I missed it. So. And you still missed it. Yeah. Buddy, it's because you've put in a shift tonight. All of you have. You've put in a huge shift. You've competed. You've been bruised and battered. It's not popular for me to win these things. It's not good for me to win these things. I waited. I let you pick your things first. It might be something to do with... I maybe have to host this and I can't compete, but that would be a shame. <laughs> I would like to compete. I would like to be part of it. But it's okay. We can make it, try to make it work a wee bit better in the future. What I worked out is that we need to make it work a wee bit faster in the future. Thank you all for staying till the, the right to the very, very end. I really do appreciate it. I've enjoyed all my drums tonight. I'm going to pour another one <laughs> so, I can, so I can raise a wee glass to you all and to everybody in the chat that stayed as long as well. Nope, too many cast strength drams to follow that Aquavite, <laughs> says Ben, whis Whiskey with Molly, fantastic stuff. Um, raise a wee glass to thank Jeff, to thank Jim, and to thank Julie for stepping forward and help me in these really daft but quite fun experiments. I find them fun, at least. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. Mm. Cheers to you all. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers guys. If you are willing... 
uh, hang back for five minutes after the credits roll so that I can raise a wee glass to you and thank you individually and personally. I've enjoyed it tonight, I really have. Uh, I think we've managed to refine it on the hoof, as they say, uh, on the go. Um, I think that we've got some ideas how to make it work a wee bit better in the future. But I think we did a good job tonight. We brought 20 different whiskies. Often no similarity between two, right? Very, very different whiskies that we're willing to step up and say that we recommend. And that in itself is worth appreciating. Hellswood is saying, Fab V pub this evening. Great fun panel to panel two, Slanchy, y'all. Chris Bullock is saying, thanks to you and your guests. And Sandro is saying, great format and engaged everyone in a super fun format. Bravo and grazie. Thank you, Sandro. Thank you, Chris Pollack. Thank you, Helen. Gino in Canada saying, what a great VPUB. Once again, have a great weekend, Roy. And Rick Johnson is saying, sorry, Roy, making the quiz around Lafroy doesn't give you a pass on not having Pete in the game. <laughs> Fair enough, Rick. Fair enough. Jim, Whiskey Novice. The most ironic name in whiskey, my friend. Until I can give you a hug and share a dram with you. Thank you for stepping forward once more, my friend. We will do that Irish V pub at some time in the future, and it will not rely on St. Patrick's Day. It'll, re it'll rely on interesting Irish whiskies. Do we agree? Agreed. Jeff, you're a superstar. I'm excited that I've got a Jeff whiskey video to watch tonight as I wind down before going to bed, my friend. I just love that you stepped forward. I'm glad you were able to make it in the end. And I should raise a wee glass to Cousin Kevin because there was a wobble with Jeff tonight. And Cousin Kevin stepped forward as my backup as well, even although he's getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning to start his shift out on the beat. To Cousin Kevin and to Jeff. And Julie, Sorry. sweetheart, I'll see you on Monday night. Is it? No, it's Tuesday or Tuesday? Tuesday. It's Tuesday, Tuesday. night. Don't I'll turn up on Monday. Night and you can batter me about the years then. And I don't care. But bring along one of your wee Bomore 18s, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll bring you what I picked for the category too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Roy. Cheers. Cheers, Jim. Cheers, Jeff. And cheers, Julie. Just fabulous folk. Just fabulous folk willing to indulge me with all this silliness and folly. Oh, big jump. Uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide is saying, great VPUB, Roy, you should do this every year. Andrew Butler is saying, incidentally, I got 8 out of 10 doing last week's quiz on catch-up, so it's go good to be back on a 10 this week. Andrew with a 10 out of 10. I didn't even look at the chat to see how they were scoring tonight, but Andrew, of course, you would get a 10 out of 10 tonight. Well done, my friend. Congratulations to you. Pedro is saying, cheers, Aquavita and the Barflies. Gino, Gene Kelly is saying, uh, cheers, wonderful time. Peter is saying, and with that, I'm calling it a day. Thanks, as always, for organising Aquavita, and thanks for participating. Julie, Jeff, and Jim and all of you Slanchiva and see you next time Simone in New Zealand is saying good good interactive VPUB thanks Roy and Peter Lay saying I only I think only Andrew Butler scored 10 oh wow Molasses Mike is saying that quiz raked me over the coals but I learned a lot great VPUB and great guests Mike Molasses thank you for your pragmatism and let's raise a wee glass to our Andrew Butler to go back up and see if Peter Lee's been searching the chat he's probably right Andrew Butler is celebrating his 10 out of 10 I'm doing a quick scan for a 10. Oh, it's crazy how strong it is. And then it gets to the tough stuff at, at the end and it tends to do that. It makes it, it means that if you do win a 10, if you do get yourself a 10, it really means something. You can, you can follow the crowd. You can rely on luck and guesswork and things. And of course, your whiskey knowledge but you have to have it all come together in order to get a 10 out of 10, we're finding most of the time. David Brody over at Bunahaven is saying, lovely night. Uh, good night, Roy. Thank you very much, David, for participating tonight with us. Donor Pass Whiskey Tim is saying, wonderful VPUB and cheers. And Danny is saying, cheers all, and don't forget to hit that like on your way home. I want to thank everybody for the very, very long session that we've had tonight. I will kill this before it hits three hours. I have to. How, how does it happen? It just does. It just happens. Listen. Let me raise a glass to you all. Thank you for indulging me on this. Thank you to Jim, Julie, and Jeff. Thanks to everybody for this. Uh, thanks to the original people that come up with the idea, I suppose, whoever you may be. And until next week, <laughs> I'll do what I always do, and I'll raise this glass and remind you all that you're very dearly loved. And until then, sláinte